to the left, I have the DR10M. So here it's fully built. Uh, so first I'm going to do a brief talk, brief comparison between the two. Talk. Then after that, I'm gonna talk about a few little pointers when building this, and then uh, I will move on to the actual build. Uh, so DR10, it's very nice. Uh, these two top plates up here, these are carbon fiber. Uh, the chassis, the entire chassis is a type of fiberglass. Uh, it's a little heavier than carbon fiber, but it's less expensive and it's also stronger. Uh, this one over here, well, you've seen my reviews, you've seen my teardowns. Hopefully, if you have not, then uh, do go ahead and watch them. So I do have full teardown of this vehicle. This is the best RTR drag car out on the market as of this video. This is a kit. Both associated vehicles. This one is usually two to 300 grams lighter than the competition, whether it's the Losi or the Traxxas. But I'm going to go ahead and weigh it again. Uh, and then I'll weigh that one over there. All right, so the weight is 1,349. Now keep in mind that the weight will vary because of the electronics and this does have the wheelie bar. And there we go. So this one is 1,394. Uh, so the way this one is built, it is actually heavier than the DR10. Uh, so the DR10 is very hard to beat, but then again, like I said, the electronics are not going to weigh the same. This ESC is heavier than that ESC. Motors are going to be close. This motor is probably about 150 grams, uh, but the ESC is heavier. So, the DR10 is a lighter vehicle, lighter platform. This is still very nice though. I think if the chassis had been carbon fiber, probably would have been a little better. Now, if I go ahead and remove everything uh, regarding the wheelie bar, actually better yet, let me weigh all of that stuff. So this is 89 grams. Uh, for this entire thing. So I'll talk about the wheelie bar first and then I'll weigh this car without the wheelie bar. I'm not going to remove the wheelie bar off that vehicle, uh, but I am going to talk a bit about this. So this wheelie bar, if I measure the wheelie bar, we are looking at, so I'm going from the edge of this hole to the edge of this hole on the same side. Uh, some approximation, actually, I should just go on the inside, might be easier. Uh, so this is about 26, just over 26 centimeters, uh, center and a center. So we're looking at about uh, 10 inches and one quarter, so 10 and a quarter inches from center to center of this wheelie bar, which is, uh, it's actually a pretty good size, usually around uh, yeah, somewhere between 25 and 26 centimeters, so around 10 inches is generally a good length. Versus this one, if I measure from here to here, this is about 1350, so about 13 and a half centimeters. Uh, 13 and a half. So that's uh, about uh, five and three eighths, five and three eighths. So the wheelie bar is definitely better on this car. Now, this has a mid-motor four-gear transmission. Now, the significance behind this is, as this is rolling this way, so that's one gear because of the differential, the next gear is rolling this way, the next gear is going that way, so that means the motor has to spin back. So the motor is spinning uh, to the right, so it's spinning clockwise. Because it's doing that, uh, so let's see, so this spins this way, then this way, then forward, and then back. As it spins this way, it pushes the stator down this way. So that's, that's the idea behind it. Versus this is a three gear, and it does the same thing. So it's gonna push the stator, 
right? If you think if, uh, think about it this way, so if this is going forward, this is one gear, two, and then three, that being the motor. Uh, and I think I'm doing something wrong. One, two, three, no, this is technically four. So one, two, three in there, and then the motor. So it's one, two, three, and then four. So as the rotor is spinning this way, it's driving the can into the wheels forward. So that means that I probably made a mistake with this one. So if this is going this way, right, that's one, two, three, four. No, no I did it right. Uh, let me hold it this way. Uh, so this is going forward, one, that one back, this one forward, and that one back, which means that this one is going forward. So as the rotor is going forward, it's pushing the can back, back into the wheels. Okay. So now I can go ahead and explain it this way. So the rotor is going forward, which in relationship to the rotor, the can is going back. So it's pushing all the weight of the can into the rear axle. So that's the idea behind this. So I'll be trying this out uh, at some other time, but right now I do have some com some comments about this uh, as well as the build. The front sh shock tower, uh, DR10 is better. It's a little higher up. Uh, once I put the tires, you will see why I am saying that. Uh, so that's a possible upgrade. I may just swap that one out to try it out or I may just buy another one. Uh, Quick little note, so right now I only have one spacer in under the gearbox. Now the bag where the gearbox is, uh, it has three spacers, but if you look at the bag with extra parts, there's the fourth one. So if you do want to put this transmission as high up as possible, go for it. Now, uh, during the build, there's a little plastic block in here. Notice it's standing, it's like this. Uh, when I started the build, I actually installed it this way accidentally, and then the gearbox wouldn't fit in, couldn't figure it out, and then I realized it was supposed to go this way. So as you're watching, just make sure you install it this way, standing up, flat side up top, rounded side pointing toward the bottom. The other thing too is there's four screws here, which I forgot to install now that I realized it, they're probably on the counter. Uh, you get these long ones, I forget, I don't remember if they're 20 or 25 millimeter, Long story short, look at the bag of extra parts and get the shorter ones. And the reason why is I did not realize this until I drove the screw in. Uh, I actually uh, hit the case and it pushed plastic into the differential and then it wouldn't roll. So when I had to go in there, open this up, punch that indentation out, uh, and I forgot to put the shorter screws. So go with the shorter screws so you don't accidentally do that. So those long screws are if you add all of the spacers in. So if you don't add all of the spacers, you're going to need shorter screws. Uh, see my hands, I've obviously been working on them. I actually just finished the build. Uh, the other thing too is in the rear. So these nylon spacers, I have a video that I did about uh, must upgrades or Instead of using fuel tubing to use these nylon spacers, so these are, these are the 440 nylon flat washers. Uh, you're going to need them in here. Put six of them, and I will show you why you need six in a bit. Let me go ahead. All right, so continuing on with the comparison. So this gauge is 14. I'm going to go to 17. So that's 17. Now that's not how you measure height. You would put it in the front, you'd put it in the rear. But, DR10 is much higher. Well, actually, let me measure it properly. Right, so the front end of this DR10, the way I set it up, it's actually less than 14, so this gauge is too big. And it's too small for the rear. So this car has a rake, so the rear is much higher than the front. And I did that on purpose. 
This actually tracks really, really nice. So if you've seen my videos running this one, it tracks super nice. Yes, this is stock. Uh, the only thing I changed actually is the diff fluid instead of grease. It originally comes with grease. I put 100,000 in it, which I decided to go with 100,000 on this one as well instead of the five. Uh, notice this. Yes, the pinion is on, everything is good. This thing is so smooth, the transmission. All right, here we go. So the front, uh, this one, the gauge was too tall. This one, the gauge is too small. So the front end is super high off the ground and that's because of this tower. This tower is shorter, so the shocks are pushing on the wheels. Uh, you can't really see from this angle. I feel, let me see if I can change the angle. But notice, notice the way the arms sit. Versus that. Let me show you the DR10. Notice how the arms sit. Beautiful. Versus that. Uh, so, that's one of the differences too. This shock tower I think is way better. I do think I'm going to replace it and try it out. And now let me see the rear height. So uh, this is taller than 14 lower than 15 so it's about 14.5 millimeters in height so this has a rake the other way so the front end is much higher than the rear something i don't like again uh shock tower swap would fix that uh now i do want to keep the droop that's why i'm not going to put limiters in the shocks to keep this down because i do want this to come up and for it to droop uh but let's see, back here, I ended up adding six of those spacers. I think I mentioned it. And one of the reasons why is I don't want the rear to hit the ground, just in case. The other thing too is, if you end up going with these wider tires, I mean, these are much wider compared to what come in the DR10. Uh, when the suspension compresses, it'll actually hit the shock tower, so it'll hit that. With these, it no longer touches. So that's the reason why I put six of them in there. It doesn't touch the shock tower. Uh, I mean, you could always trim it, why not? Just wear proper respiratory gear because you really don't want to be inhaling that dust. Uh, which leads me on to the final thing before I move on to the build. Now uh, the shocks, originally I placed them in these holes and up here, they hit the tires. So I wanted these as far out as possible for more stability. It does not work because these are so wide. Uh, they were actually rubbing. Uh, I couldn't even tighten these properly because the shock was in the way. Uh, so I had to move the shock inwards in order to use these greater tires. Uh, now there is a lot more weight in the rear because of all of these aluminum pieces. That's aluminum. That's a massive aluminum shock tower and then the massive aluminum block. Uh, so that's why this one, uh, despite the carbon fiber in the glass, uh, well, mainly the carbon fiber, to be honest, is not that much lighter. It's actually heavier. This car is heavier, as you saw, and it's because of all of that weight in the rear. Now, will it perform? That's a very good question. Uh, that's gonna be for future videos. This one is gonna focus on the build. So here we go. And again, a uh, few little tips on here is number one, when you're watching the video, just remember I made a mistake with that. So I installed it this way, make sure you install it upright. Uh, the other thing too, is I do recommend the sway bars, go ahead and attach them here and jump to the sway bars first. It's easier to attach them to the arms uh, or you can just follow the manual as I did. So just go along with the video. Uh, the other thing too is try to get those nylon spacers. Again, those are the 440 nylon spacers and install six of them in here. Uh, the other thing too is look at that bag of extra parts. 
Uh, if you only do one spacer, grab the shorter screws. Uh, I think they're in the same bag as the nuts, but I don't remember. Uh, so it's definitely the shorter screws. Don't use the long screws in that bag. You're going to uh, damage the case if you go too far. Uh, like I said, I actually punched in, realized this wasn't moving. So I had to back them out and then open up the case and fix that. Uh, I do not show that in the video though. Uh, the video is quite long and that's because I'm not fast forwarding parts so that if you're building it along, you get a sense of how long it takes. So we would be essentially building it together in a way. Uh, but here is the car. I'm excited. At some point I'll take it out for a run and uh, I'll have some updated videos. Thank you very much and let's get on to the build. This is a team associated DR10M. It's the mid-motor uh, drag car, which I've been anticipating for a long time. Uh, team associated, uh, one of the nice things is the bags are generally labeled uh, clearly. The I don't know if this will be an issue with this bag, but sometimes it's happened before with some of the other builds that I've done with team associated, where sometimes there's a bag that contains a part that you need. Uh, and that's always a pain. Uh, so far, uh, Techno has been the best, and actually Traxxas as well. Traxxas has their uh, builders, builders kits, which are very straightforward, great for for beginners, as they are simple, not too many parts. Uh, I recommend that you know everybody getting into the hobby start off with a kit, or at some point get a kit. Earlier, earlier than later in the build process. Uh, let's see, so we have bag two. I'll try to put these in rough order. And a uh, spare parts bag. All right, so we do get uh, spare parts for some reason. And I guess that's nice. I'm not really sure why we have spare parts. Uh, let's see, this is the chassis. This does not look like carbon fiber. I thought it would be carbon fiber. Uh, this looks like it is uh, glass. It is, uh, it'll still be strong. Uh, it's a little heavier though than glass, but it's stronger than fiber. Sorry, uh, heavier than carbon fiber, but it, it is stronger than carbon fiber. And these are glass as well. Uh, I'm actually gonna leave this in here because I will not be installing these, uh, mainly because Wow, that has a, was that from the bag? That was from the bag, that's a lot of residue. Uh, I want this to be my stock car, that's the reason why. All right. Uh, usually with Team Associated, there's a certificate in there of who packed everything. Well, sorry, not who packed everything, I'm trying to remember. Uh, X-Ray does certificates or little pieces of paper of who packed everything. Associated uh, generally has sort of a certificate of authenticity and quality. Uh, or at least the, some of the other models do, such as the DR10. So we will see. I'll leave this bag so I can put trash. Uh, all right, a uh, bunch of stickers. Make sure you put all the stickers on because uh, as everybody knows, uh, stickers and shiny stuff make things go faster. Uh, rival, this one's really cool. All right, so that's fun. We'll do that. Stickers off to the side. It's a totally different feel. Yeah, I don't know why. All right. Now with Team Associated, this is generally your guide. So as you're working, I recommend that you have this open and then you're flipping through the pages or just have this accessible. I mean, you could trim this if you wanted, uh, but this is a good little reference page. Now we will be starting with number one. Uh, so we will have bag one. Go ahead and place this here and I'll leave the chassis. Just move the bags I don't need right now. And here is bag one. And then I'll just leave. 
bag two over here. Now, even if you don't buy a kit, although I recommend kits, uh, if you don't buy a kit, I still recommend that the RTRs that you buy, you take them apart completely uh, and then rebuild them. It's just, it's just better. You get to know the vehicle and then you make sure that everything was built properly. Once in a while, you'll have screws that will back out because they weren't set properly or other things. Uh, sure, let's see. So we have this, now we'll place all the bearings. And uh, before I get started, I'm going to use a little oil. This is not including the kits, but uh, Phantom makes very good bearing oil. So I'm just going to apply a drop. Now when applying a drop, you just bring it down, you're not going to be able to see, but a drop's going to collect, and once that drop collects, you just touch the bearing, and then the oil just spreads. Now that's really all you need to do, and then just make sure that you cap it so you don't spill. So that's something I recommend that you get. Uh, if this is the very first RC car you ever buy, uh, do get quality tools. Uh, tools are very, very important. That way you're not stripping screws. And don't tell my wife I'm not wearing my ring. Can you tell I wear a ring? Not with this light. Uh, there is a mark. Uh, but yeah, don't tell her. That, that's fine. She'll probably end up watching the video and then I'll be in trouble anyway. Not because of the ring, but because I bought this and didn't tell her. Uh, I'm kidding. She knows. She knows everything. Uh, all right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. Now, one of the things to note is the orientation. So there's two sides here. I'm going to hold it this way. So this is the top, this is the bottom. So the bottom has these two extra recesses that you can see right there, right here on these sides versus the top does not. Grab the top, I'm going to install the bearings. Now, problem that I'm coming into right now is I only see one. Oh, there's the other one. There's the other uh, bushing. So it was just in the screw. And these, I'm gonna flip it now. These will go in here and make sure that they're sat properly and then grab a bearing and then install this in here. And uh, adding oil is very, very important so that the steering does not bind. It's something that is easily overlooked. Uh, many times, it's, I would say most people probably don't do it. Why? Uh, I don't know, nobody said anything. That's a possibility. It, more than likely, that's the reason why. All right, so, this is almost complete. Now we need uh, two of these. Now all of these ball studs are the same, which is nice. That way you don't have to measure and go through. Uh, these are a two millimeter driver. So use a two millimeter driver and they will go in this way. Uh, so they go in through here. When you're driving metal into plastic, make sure you're driving it straight because once it starts cutting the plastic, that's that's pretty much it. There's nothing you can do. Uh, for some parts, you may want to pre-thread them before you try the actual installation. Something else that you can do is when you start threading, maybe you'll do a few threads and then back it out and then bring it back in and then back it out. And the reason why is as it's cutting, uh, sometimes it removes material and then that excess material will just come out and will make it easier for you to keep driving the screw. Uh, I mean, if you're 
you have a tap and die set and you're tapping into metal, that's generally what you do. You go on, cut, back out, go back in, cuts, back out. Huh. But here we go. So we have this. Now uh, we have this little piece right here. And one of the things that you need to note is this little material. So this material actually sticks out versus this other side's flat. Uh, so this is going to be making, this will make a difference. So we need to orient this. So again, this part goes to toward the top. Uh, we're gonna put this off to the side. So those little pieces that stick up, that goes up. So it will go just like this. Now we have the, let's see, we have these two countersunk screws. We have the long screws right here, and then we have the short screws right in there. So I'll go ahead and take the long screws. I'll fit one through here, one through here, just like that. So that is ready. This is ready. Now the other bearings are going to go in here. So you can go ahead and install them. One and then two. And then one and two. So the bearings are in there now. These are oiled, they move freely. Now this part is going to go over here. So this is going to attach and this one will as well. So that's something that you need to note. So this thin part, that's going to go toward this, right where the bearings go. And this actually it points. So this will be pointing out. So if this were like this, this curves out. And this one will curve out as well. So this will look just like that. So when you put the screws in for this, it'll be very important to hold it the correct way because now I can go ahead and grab this and put this in here and put this in here. Right there. So this will sit just like that. All right. Now, I'm gonna grab these screws. Go ahead and put this screw right through here. This one will thread right into plastic. Now, when you're threading into plastic, do not use thread lock. You do not need thread lock. But the most important thing when you're threading into plastic is do not over tighten. Uh, you really don't need to. You're just going to destroy the plastic. All right, so. All right, perfect. And. Now for the next one. Oh, this is backwards. Hold on. Right in here. Now, uh, one of the things to note is, I'm actually looking at the picture. These are, uh, here we go. Yeah, I accidentally put these on the bottom instead of the top. So, wait, no, they're right. Uh, they're just backwards. So give me a moment. Uh, so this is what the assembly looks like. So remember this faces up. Uh, so when you have it, if you point it that way, so that's forward, this long arm should be on your left and it curves out. The short arm should be on the right and it curves out as well. The ball studs should be pointing forward. 
So all I need to do now is just install this top ball stud and that is it for this little section. Now you don't have to install this one right now, you can install it later, but it's in the step, so I might as well. This one's somewhat of a pain. All right, but I got it. Just need a little more elbow grease to get it in. And here we go. So at this point, I can go ahead and grab this section right over here. Now this, if I look at this correctly, let's see, we have these screws. So these should go right in here. And there we go. Now, one of the reasons why I leave the uh, video and I'm not speeding through this is to give you time to actually uh, do these steps at the same time. That's the reason why. Like I said, snug is all you need. So as soon as I feel some resistance, that's where I start stopping. And as you can see, this is too tight. So go ahead and back out. Back out, back out. So you don't even need to make these snug. All right, there we go. Not that you're gonna be steering uh, a lot, but still you want everything to be as free as possible. That's the reason why. Now, if you end up having a little bit of uh, play in the parts, just slop. Yeah, that's that's normal for Team Associated. Uh, but here we go. All right, that one's good. So now at this point, I can go ahead and grab both of these pieces. Uh, this, uh, as long as this, this is actually, this looks thicker than the other components. Now this is more plastic than fiber compared to their buggies or the short course, which I find it interesting. Now, look at these and these little humps. So there's two little humps. These go up and forward. So when you grab this, this will sit right in here. So it should look just like that. Uh, so up and forward. And then once that one is installed, this one will sit right on top. So if you notice those, those dimples right in there, those will key in right in here, and that's how they line up. So this will just sit right on top, just like this. And then you use the countersunk screws. Those will go in here. Now, if you have an electric screwdriver, you can go ahead and use an electric screwdriver. I do not. Uh, Buddy of mine tried convincing me to get one. I did not. I mean, it was on sale, but I don't know, I'm just used to doing everything by hand. Well, for now, maybe once I'm older, I'll get tired of it and I'll start using the electric screwdriver. And that's it. So this all moves freely. This part is complete. So we're gonna move on to the next step. So 
the next step is going to involve bag two. These, uh, these just cut off and then later on you can shave that. Uh, just clean it out a little more. Oh, this one's fine. Now when you place the screws, everything, try to put them by size, that always helps. So we have the ball studs, these four, uh, let's see, ball bearings were over here. Now even though these have that little seal, more than likely these are grease filled, so I'm not going to worry about them. Uh, but you could always put a little drop of that same oil that I used for the other ones. All right, here we go, so that's four, two nuts, two screws and we are golden. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab these. Now, these, uh, you do get two of them, and they are mirror images of each other, so these are not interchangeable. If you accidentally install this on the other side, uh, it's going to change your steering, as you can see. So make sure that you have these on the correct side. Just look at the smooth surface. That smooth surface goes toward the top. Now, the these, uh, they're not that bad, just put the bearings in there. Now when you're sticking the bearings in here, make sure that the bearings are going in straight, or in other words, parallel. If you put them in crooked this way and then you force them in, you're going to damage the plastic. So you need to make sure these are about straight and then they should just go in. Grab the spindle. These are, the machining is actually great on this thing. There we go. All right, now that we have these spindles, uh, we're going to need some thread lock compound, which I placed right over here. Now, something that you, you should do is, and I'm not doing, uh, it'll be fine, is uh, clean all the screws with some rubbing alcohol beforehand and the reason why is to get rid of any machining oil that might be in the screws. All right, that's it. Now, something you can do if you wanna tighten it, just put a wheel. I mean, you can use a 12 millimeter, but you can always just put a wheel and then hold the wheel. So for example, you can do something like this and then just hold the wheel. And then you can torque it just a little more. Do not overdo it. And then, see that's too tight. There we go. So if I grab the wheel, I should really put a nut on here, but there we go. So if you just tighten it by hand, that's really all you need. All right. Uh, so we have the two of them. Now, the next thing, uh, you're gonna grab these little hats. Now these are all the same size and these will go in the caster blocks. You just grab them, push them in. Now these should go in no problem because the hole is actually slightly larger. Uh, so that's something you wanna keep in mind. Now this is the right one. So this one will go over here and uh, let's see, so it'll go, this is the bottom, this is the top, so this is forward. So if you look at this, if you look at it this way, this part, this is gonna go on the outside. Well, 
I said the outside, goes forward. So that part goes forward. So this thing will be sitting like this, pointing forward. So that cutout will go forward. Uh, once you have this, you can go ahead and grab one of these. Now this one, uh, just by looking at it, this is the left and this is the right. So the right, when it sits here, should be pointing left. So the right points left, the left points right. And this will slide right in here, just like that. And you can go ahead and grab one of these screws and then start it. Do not fully tighten this, just get it started. Just a few threads and that's it. Then you want to go ahead and install the one on the other side. And the reason why is if you drive one of the screws in all the way, it might go in slightly crooked or slightly at an angle. And then once you install the other one, uh, your steering may start binding. That's the reason why. Again, do not over tighten this. Snug is all you need. That's it. So that will move freely. And there you go. Now, you have two different lengths for the ball studs. You have a shorter and a longer one. The one that you need is the short one. This is a six millimeter. Uh, the six millimeter is going to be the one that's gonna go on your steering. So right in here. So I'll go ahead and install this. So if you look at the smooth area, it goes there. Uh, and you are going to need some thread lock on here. Let me go ahead and apply that. Now, there's these little nuts. These nuts are just going to fall in there, so that's keyed in. Uh, so th there's really no way, I, well, I think there's no way, next thing you know, somebody's gonna prove me wrong. Uh, quick little note, you, you actually do not need the thread lock compound because these are nylon nuts, uh, but oh well, it's already there. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. But like I said, there's, I think there's no way you can mess this part up because, well, the nut can only go in, on one side. But you'd be surprised. So we'll use this. I'll turn this. I'll slide the nut in there. Then after I slide the nut, this goes in here. Right in there. Perfect. Uh, now I'm actually going to go ahead and finish this one. Uh, so again, if we look at this, this will go just like that. This recessed area, this goes forward. This is where the other ball stud goes. So if it helps you out, instead of installing the ball stud at the end, just install it first. And that way you know which part is forward. So that always helps. And there we go, just like that. So like I said, you can always install the ball stud first. That way you always know which part goes forward. So that will go forward. And then again, this curved part goes down. So just once the ball stud's there, you know it goes up and forward. And this, it, uh, well, first we need the little hats. So these bushings will go in here. Now that we have the bushings, uh, the arm, this is going to point in. So the left side points right. And I'm going to do the same thing as with the other one. go and there we go all 
All right, and that moves freely. So these are ready. So we have the right and the left. So this will go this way once we install it and this one will go this way once we install it. Uh, so now I can move on to bag three. Bag three is going to contain the arms. So this is bag three. Now a quick note on the arms. Uh, it's, it's important on many vehicles, not just the drag car, but the arms. Sometimes you may need to ream the arms just to make sure that they operate freely. Uh, that's something that you just have to be aware of. Uh, I will leave those body mounts off to the side. That one as well. Uh, here we have this brace is very, very important. Uh, this is actually, this looks a lot thicker than what the buggies have. Uh, now, yeah, this is way thicker. Uh, in the buggies in the short course, it's a thinner piece. It's probably half this thickness. Those things break like you wouldn't believe. So you're better off just getting a metal bulkhead, either the steel or the brass bulkhead. I don't remember which one I'm running. I think I'm running, I may be running the brass ones. All right. that. Right here. And as I said, uh, make sure that you separate all the screws by size. Just makes the build process much easier. And now I can go ahead and separate these. Uh, so we'll have a bit of excess material. And here are the arms. You do get the Gullwing arms, which are, these arms are beautiful. Uh, team Associated, the front suspension and Team Associated vehicles is wonderful. All right, so let's go ahead and start. I'll put the bumper off to the side. All right, now, these holes where the shocks go, these are going to go toward the rear. So this arm has to bend up, curve up toward the outside and these holes go toward the rear. So that's her right arm. Now let me just make sure, I don't think these are marked. They are not marked. Uh, now I'm not sure about these, but Team Associate, at least for the rear arms, you can switch them because you can install the shocks in front or behind the shock tire. Uh, as of now, I'm not sure if you can do this with this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the arm. Now the arm's going to go in here. Uh, so far this feels smooth, so I don't have to remove any material. I will grab the short pin. So there's two sets of pins, grab one of the short ones, and then just drive it through. Notice it cannot go through this. So this little dimple here with the tiny small little hole, uh, that goes forward. And the only reason why you have that little hole in there is so you can stick a little pick or sometimes your 1.5 millimeter driver fits in there and you can push these out. That's the only reason. Now, once that's installed, you're going to grab one of these tiny little screws, really small, and these are just retaining screws. So grab your 1.5 and this will go in here. You do not have to snug it up. Uh, once it's flush, that's all you need. It's really just a small amount of the head that's going to block this pin from coming out. So if I were to stick this in here and try to push the pin out as I am, that screw catches it, so it cannot back out. That's 
that's the reason why. Uh, and I can now move into the other side. So the other side, you have the exact same thing. So go ahead and grab this, just slide this on. Uh, and here, uh, my recommendation is stick the little screw in there first, and you will see why in a bit. So just stick that screw in. Like I said, once it's flush or you feel that change in resistance, just stop. Uh, do not over tighten these. These are very easy to strip out. But the reason why is so you can drop this pin from the front. Awesome, don't have to ream anything. All right, uh, let's see. So we'll go ahead and install the screw on the inside, the inner part of the arm. Grab one more. And I need a short pin. There we go. Come on. And I can place the arm and I can do the same thing since I've already installed this screw. And the reason why I did this is uh, you do have plenty of room back here, but if you install it through the front, one, it's going to hold everything in place, so that's going to stay. But the other reason, too, is this has to be installed. So I find it easier to install this after while it's held this way. Now here, one of the things to note about this is there's a slightly rounded edge and there's a really sharp edge. The sharp edge goes against the plastic. The rounded edge points forward. Now these two, these little portions here, which are down, these go up. Well, in your camera, they look down. Right now they're pointing toward me. And there really is no way to mistake that because it should fit the contours of the plastic. That's the reason why. Uh, but that is it. So at this point, uh, there's two more screws that you should have left over. Now these, for these two, because these are going into that metal part, that aluminum piece, you will need some thread lock compounds. So make sure that you apply some. Now for all of these, make sure that you use the blue thread lock. Do not use red. Uh, that one's going to be a pain. These small little screws, if you use red, uh, if you ever have to remove them, you can potentially break the screws off and then you're going to have a big problem with the screws. So let me put some there. That's too much. I'll wipe some of it off. And the screws that I'm installing now, uh, just install them before you even install the part. And the reason why is this thing will still come off. So if you just install them off, this will make it a lot easier. Uh, just wiping the excess. All right. So now at this point, I can go ahead and leave this for now. Uh, I'm gonna, I will go ahead and grab the shock tower and actually, no, I won't leave it because the shock tower does not hold this in. So I do need the two screws that hold this in, which will be these button screws. So you have a pair of button screws uh, that match no others. It, yeah, they're much shorter. I believe these are 10 millimeter. Uh, I can actually, this will tell me uh, 12 millimeter. Uh, these are too short, but it's got to be those. Let's see. Because these will. Well, these are 12. All right, so it's actually these over here. Uh, it says 12, we'll use the 12. So 
go in here. Wait a minute, made a mistake. They're not 12. Shock tire uses 12. These are 10, so it was those short ones that I mentioned the first time. A good thing I did not continue threading these on. That's why it seemed a little odd. Now, it's not fully tightened yet. I'm gonna drive the other one in. The second one, I will tighten fully, and then I'll go back to that first one. And there we go. All right, so that is way too tight. As you can see, these are binding. I may just use shims. Those remove material as well. Oh, actually, found what the problem is. The pins. I'm actually going to loosen these a little, little ones. See, so that binds it up. So let's see. So I do that, do that. I may actually end up grinding the pin. Uh, so what's happening is this and this, once I tighten this, those are pinching the pin and not allowing it to move freely. So that's the issue. Uh, but as of now, actually, that's perfectly fine. So I just loosened everything a little. There's a small little gap, I don't like it. Uh, so I'm either going to take off the pins and grind them later on, once I finish the build, or I'm just going to add a little washer in here, uh, which to be honest, I may just add the washer now. Uh, I have to look for them. So I'll probably do that uh, at the end off camera. Uh, now for the shock tower. So shock tower, so if you run into that binding, just keep that in mind. Uh, the shock tower is right here. So these, if you look at these, those point forward. So this shock tower will just go right in here. And then once it's in there, uh, you'll be set. So. We're going to use the four button head screws. So these are the four button head screws. And it will be a two millimeter driver. The other way to note that this is, well, it, you'll see. It's all of these things have to point forward. So it'll be quite obvious, I would say.
There we go. So we have all those four right in here. Now I will go ahead and grab the ball studs and install these. So you have these two little uh, bushings. These are, might be three millimeter. Uh, make sure you install those two bushings. There's only two. And these will go, uh, actually, I don't know if they go on the inner hole, the outer hole. Based on the image, they go on the inner hole. So go on the inner hole. You may adjust them and then later decide to go on the outer uh, for the links. Uh, it just depends. So this will adjust your roll center. If you make these links shorter, it's going to change the way the tire acts when it goes up. those are there now the next thing uh, I will go ahead and grab the 26 millimeter and they are button heads so it's the longest screws that you have here these are not 26 but they are the longest ones and these I will go ahead and place on the very top now I'll be honest even if the diagram didn't say to put them on the very top I would have placed them on the very top uh, just because it's a drag car. But it depends, I may actually end up moving them if uh, I determine there's uh, the suspension's not acting the way I want it. Maybe the right height's too large. We'll see. So grab your 5.5 millimeter driver and then go ahead and tighten these. Snug is all you need. Uh, you can put thread lock on these, but you don't have to. And the reason why is technically there's going to be a double nut uh, because it'll be this nut and then the shock will go back here and then there's another nut. So just make sure that you put thread lock on the outer one if it's not nylon, but more than likely because it's team associated, that nut will have nylon. So it shouldn't be a problem. And again, snug is all you need. Uh, so at this point, we have the four screws here holding the shock tire. We have the ball studs right in here with the spacers, and we have the screws with the nuts that are going to be holding the shocks. Uh, so now we can go on to the next page. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Page seven. Go ahead and move this back because now I need the bumper. Now the bumper, notice the smooth part, this is going to go down, this part goes up. So we'll place this here. Now we have these right in here. And these actually go into the shock tower right in here. So these have to point back because these will actually, this one will go over here. So they will go like this and they will click right in here, right in place. And I can go ahead and flip this over. And for this, you need the countersunk screws. Now it's gonna be the shorter countersunk screws. Those are the 10 millimeter. Now when you measure these, measure these from the top of the head to the bottom. And go ahead, drive them in.
Now I can go ahead and install the post. Now the post, uh, I'm gonna make a quick little note because I'm not going to assemble these fully. Uh, these go right on top and then these will just slide up and down. Uh, that's all they do. Now these uh, just go in here. Actually, I could install these, uh, but you're gonna use uh, the thinner screws. So you have two thinner screws, uh, these here, and then you have these here. These are the ones that you have to use. Now the long one, the long one is going to go on this top portion. Now notice that little cutout. So this part is shorter. That's the side the screw goes through. So you would drive this in. This goes right in here. Now the screws I don't want to install are the smaller ones and the smaller ones are the ones that determine the height. Well, you would install them wherever. So for example, here, uh, but I'll do these at the end. That way I only do them once, but I can go ahead and do this one. Go. And we grab another pair of 10 millimeters. Now these will stick in here. Make sure that these are facing this way. Now, one of the nice things about installing body clips perpendicular to the car is that uh, they don't fall out as easily. All right, now we have that. So at this point, we can go ahead and make this to the front suspension. So this will go in here uh, and you will use, so if you look back here, you will need countersunk screws for the back. Those are 12 millimeter, which as of now, the 12 millimeter are the shortest that you have right now. So go ahead and grab that, put the driver. Now it's very important, and I keep emphasizing this, do not over tighten any, any of the screws. You can damage the plastics. Once you damage the plastics, you're better off just getting new ones, just new replacement parts. Uh, you can use a little bit of CA glue and pour some in there. Uh, for certain areas, it will work. For some, uh, it's not really going to work. It'll be a short-term temporary fix and then you're gonna end up buying a new part anyway.
So again, if you're using an electric screwdriver, this will be a lot faster. Just make sure you do not over tighten things. So uh, check the torque setting in your electric screwdriver. If you're doing this by hand, uh, I'm leaving the video as is. I'm not speeding through the parts, mainly because I want to give you a better idea on how long it will actually take to do the build. That's the reason why. And there we go. So all of this is attached. Uh, so at this point later on, once I figure out the body, how it's going to fit, I may or may not use these. I mean, these you can actually take off and put straight on here. But uh, we're gonna move on to the next bag, which is bag four. All right, bag four. All right, so we can actually set this off to the side because bag four involves the rear assembly. Uh, well, the rear suspension arms. Uh, now, one of the things to be careful is you do have these little washers. Uh, they're washers, or are they shins? I'm gonna call them washers. Sometimes they get stuck in the plastic, so don't throw away the plastic until you get those parts out. Now for the rear, uh, you get these two right here and then you get these two right over here. So these are centered, so these go right in the center. And then these, there's actually a 0.5 millimeter offset. And wherever you see the dot, that's where the offset is. So if you go center, it's over here. If you place them this way, center, it's up. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can, if you have a buggy or a different associated, you can use those if you wanted to tune the suspension, but given that these are the ones that are in the kit, these are the ones I'm going to use, and I'm just going to assume and hope that uh, AE uh, did its homework and already figured out that this is the best way to go on this car. Now keep in mind, you may want to switch them up later on. Uh, this is a large piece. So this goes all the way to the rear. So this is the one that we're going to be putting those offset ones on. This is the one that goes in the front. These, we're gonna put the neutral ones or the ones that are centered. So these will go in here and you can see the little recess there. So this will go right in here. These are a really snug fit, really snug. Now, one of the things that you are going to want to do is you're going to want to clean that excess material. Uh, if it has any, this doesn't really have much. Let's see, there we go. And let's work this one. Might as well clean everything now. There we go. You can also use a small little file. Using a file will be just be safer. You run a uh, lower chance of cutting yourself with the file. All right, so I'm just using this ruler to press on them to make sure that they are flush. If you do not, uh, they're going to put more pressure on the pin. Suspension may bind as the arms are going to come into contact with this. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, let's go ahead and remove the arms. All right, so we have this. And now we can install these. Now these, that little dot, that goes to the outside. So when you install these, just make sure that this, that little dot is toward the outside. So it should be going that way. And again, make sure they're pressed in properly. All right, and I'm good to go. Now I only see three screws, find that interesting. Uh, 
Why do I only have three? I would assume four. I would need four. Uh, that's all I see. So maybe I only need three. We'll, we'll see. All right, so we'll grab the chassis. Now the chassis, all of this, this goes toward the bottom. This smooth surface with uh, where nothing is countersunk, this faces up. Now these, so this will point that way, so the holes will be facing back. This will sit right in here. And you are going to need a thread lock compound for this, so keep that in mind. Here we go. So you'll use two for the front. I'm thinking you only use one for the rear for now. Then once the everything else is assembled, the other screws are probably in there. Because uh, I'm looking at the holes, there's five holes. So it's probably for that one. That is why I only have three. All right. Now at this point, I am not seeing a place for these shims. So I will go ahead and just place them off to the side. Now something that I did not do that you could do is you could run CA glue all the way around. If this were a carbon fiber chassis, I would have, I would have uh, done so, but on this one, I'm not going to, don't think it'll split as easily. That's the reason why. All right. Uh, so that's how those go. Now this one holes are going to face forward, uh, but the pins will go in here. So I'll go ahead and just place the pins for now. And I'm installing the pins right in here. And I'm not seeing where those shims go. These shims, see they're too small for this. Let me just double check. Uh, mm -hmm, mm, don't see, don't see any shims. Uh, I'm not going to use them. Not sure what they're for. All right, so that is forward, this is the rear, uh, so we have the arms, and the arms, the shocks mount toward the rear. So this will go like this, this will go like this. So these holes for the shocks, they go to the rear, and remember this has to angle up. So go ahead and slide this in, slide that in, and these move freely. Uh, at least on uh, this kit, I, I, I will not need to shim it, which is great. Now, based on this picture, these cutouts, these face up. The smooth, flat section here, this face is down. So I will go ahead and install this in here. Put the pins right in there. And I will go ahead and install, it's going to be that middle hole, that middle rear. That will hold it in. So far, this is very nice. Uh, so, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and take care of this arm. This one's free. This one, this one could be freer. So these are some of the things you have to go through and correct. Uh, could also be, oh. You know what? I'm not gonna do anything right now until everything's fully assembled. Uh, the only thing I did is I twisted this, so this was probably too far forward. Uh, so don't worry about it now. Just once it's fully assembled, check everything, make sure it doesn't bind. Uh, so at this point, we can now go into bag five and go ahead and get bag five started. All right.
nice carbon fiber shock tower. There's no more parts in here. Right, so we have this, this, and right in here. So now I have all the parts. Uh, so the first thing I need to look at are these parts here. Now this is aluminum. This is actually a very nice piece. Uh, this is plastic. Now the orientation, these little, so notice how this is smooth. This is not, this actually faces up. So it's the opposite of the front here. Those little uh, cavities, those go up. Now I will be needing a ball stud with a spacer. I'll grab a spacer and I'll go ahead and grab that and I will install these on the inside. Here we go. Snug is all you need. Mildly snug is all you need. And here we go. All right. Now that I have this, luckily this is plastic. So here is the tower. The countersunk screws will go in this way, so they go that way, which means this has to go on this other side. Plus, if you notice this, there's a cutout where this will key in, and this keys in beautifully. Now, the screws that you're going to need to go through the back, those are the 12 millimeter, which are these right over here. Now I would have to say that in all of the builds that I've I've completed, uh, this one I haven't completed, but even in this build, uh, the driver I use the most is the two millimeter. And this two millimeter I've had for a really long time. I have no idea how many kits I've built with it. And it is still in very great shape. This is an MIP driver. I'm not saying MIP is the best that there is out there but it's definitely a great driver. Uh, now each driver is probably close to $20 or you can get the three piece set for maybe 45 as of the time of this video. Uh, that is it. But if you look at this driver, I mean, it is still in very good shape. Well, the camera's not focusing. But anyway, that aside, do not use Allen wrenches. Allen wrenches, your fingers are gonna be hurting. It's going to be a pain. All right. So we have completed this little section right over here. So at this point, I will go ahead and grab the shock tower. Now the shock tower, this one appears to be uniform. So there's no front and rear. This one will sit right here. So you've noticed the triangle, triangle. This will go right in here. So the shock tower will screw on from behind, just like this. Uh, the aluminum parts was threaded. So all of your screws are gonna go from here into the aluminum. Now, we're only going to use two screws. Uh, and let me take a closer look. It's going to be the outer holes of the triangle, which means these right over here. 
Now for those, I'll need the tens. So here are the tens. And I'm actually going to stick this through. I'll stick the other one through. And then once they're through, I'll flip them and I'll put the thread lock there, right through there. Here we go. This is a really thick uh, shock tower, so this is this is nice. About a four millimeter. All right, we have this built. So now this will go ahead and key right in here. So that little section, this will just fall right in place. Nice fit. Uh, this goes toward the back. And for this one, we're gonna need the 16 millimeter countersunk screws, which should be these. Go ahead and do a quick measurement. 16, yeah. And these are going into aluminum, which means move some of the excess. So after installing these two screws, then you want to check these. So as of now, as you can see, they, they are moving freely. You wanna make sure they continue moving freely. Oh, there we go. Oh, nothing to do, so these are perfect. All right, uh, so that completes that portion. Now I can move on to this little section here. Now, I really don't like installing these before I have the body, and the reason why is I don't like making too many adjustments afterwards, uh, but this will just slide in. I will start a screw right in here. I'll actually put it here on the high setting. Grab one of these, and then I'll start it, but I won't drive it all the way in. Once you have the body and everything set, then go ahead and drive it all the way in. But for now, did I miss? Am I supposed to, there we go. Did miss. All right, so just so this doesn't fall out. And there we go. It's partially threaded in. Perfect. And now I can use these and these. Now again, note, uh, there's that little, this one's shorter, that's where the screw goes through. Right through there. There we go. Go ahead and loosen this one up. There. So 
you want these to move so that the body just sits and uh, this adjusts to the body. Uh, now that I have this, I can go ahead and install this. Now this will go on the back uh, and these will, wait, hold on. This is supposed to go back like this. There we go, all right. All right, so these screws will go through this way. I'm just installing the lower two. I am installing the lower two, all right. So 14 millimeters, those are gonna be these button screws right over here, 14 millimeter. And these will go into aluminum. So let me go ahead and apply some thread lock compound. There we go. And that's what we have here. Now, you are going to have some screws left over. As you can see, we have these and we have those. Uh, but the only reason why we have them is because we're not completely finished. Now we have to look for the 20 millimeter, which I believe are these. But let me go ahead and measure. Uh, these are just short, but these are going to be too long. Yeah, so it has to be these. Uh, these are now going to go in through the front. So you're going to go in through here and this these go into plastic. That is why you do not need thread lock compounds. So these are going to thread right onto that plastic. Then once we do this, we're gonna need the shock tires. Now the shocks, I will go ahead and install them all the way to the outside. According to the diagram, actually it might be all the way to the outside in the diagram. And once we do that, we'll be finished with bag five and then we can move on to two bag six. So here we go. Almost finished. There we go, perfect. That's the way this looks. Now for the shocks. Uh, the screws for the shocks actually face forward, so the shocks are gonna sit on the inside of the shock tire, but the outside of the arm. Uh, so, you just drive one of these through. You can drive the other one. And these nuts are just regular nuts. Uh, you can use some thread lock compound if you like, but like I said, uh, you're going to have another nut that's gonna be holding the shock. It's not really necessary. So. I'm not going to use it. So it's a 1.5. There we go. That is it. Move on to bag six. So bag six, this is where the, well, I guess the car is already taking shape, but it's, we, we're now going to be installing uh, the front area. Now we have this little plate here, which I find interesting. So this is just uh, glass fiber. I'm calling it glass fiber. So it's like a fiberglass uh, resin. It's the same thing the chassis is made out of. So I'm wondering if that's the same, it looks like it's the same dimensions as the regular associated plates. So if you needed to add weight later on, I'm not sure you can see that plate down there underneath the servo. Actually, that's a different size. Maybe it's similar to the short course. Uh, but I'm curious, if not, 
I'm sure they're going to make one. Uh, all right, so this is for your antenna. We'll put that off to the side. Uh, these little blue things, I think these are going to be holding the side rails. It looks like they are. these here we go so these are all the same size they are tire all right now there's a variety of things we're going to be working with the front we're also going to be working with the rear this is going to go back here so that's part of what's going to hold the transmission uh, we have these two plates here. Again, if you want to, you can run CA, just so these don't split, uh, which is a possibility. I don't think it would be likely, uh, but you could. Now, uh, assuming this orientation is correct, this is going to face toward the rear. The short end is going to be toward the front. So given the way I'm oriented, I have the car oriented, We'll go ahead and place them like this on my bench. And I'm actually going to begin with uh, these little items. So these items are going to go in the rear. I will have two. I wish this was a different color. Actually, they go right here, right in the center. And you are going to need thread lock for these. Now, uh, we're gonna be using the countersunk screws for those and the countersunk screws uh, the eight millimeter, which are these small ones, those are gonna, these will go in the center. We'll go ahead and start with them. Something you can do is just put thread lock on everything. Start with this one and we'll go ahead and work this. Go. Flip this. So these are going to go with these, so I'll leave them. These screws go here and these will go with the antenna. So I'll set those off to the side just so I don't confuse them. Uh, let's see, so we have one, two, all right. All right, perfect. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Great, so these go in the front. So I will be moving over to the front right now so I can get to make the front end. These will go here. So I need one, two, three, four, five. And those are these right over here, which are which are the 10 millimeter. Now these are all going into plastic. Therefore, I do not need to worry about thread lock.
So far, this is a beautiful build as of now. As of this video, to be honest, I'm not sure how popular uh, drag racing is. And the reason why I say that is uh, there's very few companies that make them compared to other race classes. That's the reason why. Uh, so maybe it's extremely popular, maybe not, uh, but we'll see. But this uh, DR10 kit, uh, it, it took them long enough to release one. Especially since many of the parts are they already had many of these parts they already had uh if you look at the front bumper i mean that should remind you of the sr10 i mean all the suspension that's every single kit they have uses it i mean different length arms but i mean buggies these have been the buggies for a long time so it's just a buggy front suspension again sr10 is buggy suspension with a short course chassis Actually, no, it doesn't have a short course chassis. It is a buggy. That's just a buggy with a bumper. It's actually a short buggy chassis on a chassis on the SR10. So if you took an SR10, you could put a short course chassis on it uh, and turn it into a drag car. All right. That's all mounted up. And now that I have this, let's see. So now I need to deal with these, so these little sections. Now, so far, just to look at the screws that I've used, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have these five right here. Uh, now, I have gone ahead and installed one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now there's three screws back here, which are eight millimeters. And these are these three that I have on this other section. Uh, based on what I see here in the bag. Oh, actually. Yes. All right. Let's move these over here. These actually go from underneath and I need three button screws. So that's a potential mistake. So these are button screws right in here. So I'll go ahead and grab these, move this off to the side. And if I orient them, see the manual has them like this. Uh, there's a hole right in here. So it's there's one, two. So it goes in the second. I will grab a button screw. Right there. There we go go now something else that you can do just so you don't get thread lock all over the carbon because the carbon will absorb it is put the screw through first then apply the thread lock compound and then you can do this uh, so there now I can use this one there's no thread lock compound needed for this because that's going to go into plastic now this one should be this front hole. I'm going to go ahead and double check. Uh, it is. Now I'm not sure why they did such a horrible job with the print, to be honest. It, it is a challenge to see. Uh, here we go. And here we go. So I'll go ahead and drive this in. Now, I'm not going to actually don't install this one right away. And the reason why is you need to run the wire, the sensor wire. Sorry, not the sensor wire. What am I thinking? The ESC wire through here. Uh, so I have no idea why I'm even installing this. Uh, I'm also wondering where I left the receiver. All right, it's right over here. Uh, so I'll just run this through. Only thing is, I'm not sure if it should go through there or on the outside. Uh, let me go ahead and skip just a tad and see how this thing has the receiver installed. Uh, let's see, electronics, they're right over here. Uh, receiver. This is very, very difficult to see. Two 
plates. I really cannot tell, so I'm just going to remove this, run the wire through. It's just I don't know what goes in that hole. Uh, oh, actually, that plate goes right in here. This one. This one's probably... Alright, well, anyway, go ahead and run this in. So then I can go ahead and do that. And did I? All right, so I'll leave it like this for now. All right, uh, that's it. So it doesn't show me, uh, it just shows this. Let's go ahead and look at those three screws. What do they, ah, this plate. So they, so these are the three that we need. Uh, so this will go there. Now, orientation, that should, perfect. So this cutout, if you notice this, this is gonna go toward the rear. So when you install this, this will go just like that. Go ahead and flip this for now. And we'll go ahead and grab one of these. Use a little bit of thread lock compound. And I'll try to get the center one first. It'll be close, not too far. Not too far in though, I don't want to over tighten it, I just want to hold it. And then once it's held, we'll go with the next one. is set. So we have that installed, we have this, and now uh, we have to install those two plates. And so these will go, based on what I'm saying, these do face up, so these will go here. Those are those two holes somewhat in the middle, right in there. So these two hole. oh, oh well, there's the first mistake. So this one does not go there. Let's go ahead and remove this. This must be the rear hole. receiver and I can go ahead and install these now which they don't match so maybe it was oh my goodness I had on the correct hole let's undo this problem all right so it actually goes this hole in the middle and then out of these two holes it's the one in the back uh, so this goes like that so I had it right should have trusted 
what I had done. Oh well, now you know. Here we go. We'll just redo this. All right, here we go, perfect. Uh, now I'm gonna need these eight millimeters. Now these eight millimeters, I need six of them for this little top deck right in here. For this back portion, I'm gonna need more afterwards, but let me go ahead and here we go. So I'll get it started. It's not gonna go in all the way right away. I just want to set all the screws and then once I have all the screws in there, then I'm actually going to go ahead and drive them all the way in. But for now, let me just get some thread lock on all of these. Actually, I don't need thread lock on all of them. Uh, well, I put thread lock only on the ones that I needed, so that was good. At least I didn't overdo it. All right. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start tightening them all, just the six in the rear, and then I'll do the four in front, two on each side. these two uh, those are oh, those are for the plate so these are the four these longer ones these are the ones that you're going to need for the front so it's going to be two on each side that you will have right over here Now, once you're finished, you really want this to be on a hard surface, so I will be redoing this later on off camera, and that's for the tweak of the car. So that's something to keep in mind. So I do have a setup board, I'll do it later, simply because that's going to take setting the tweak of the car. Maybe you'll get lucky and there'll be no adjustments, but chances are you're probably gonna have to deal with it, and that takes more time than I wanna spend, to be honest, on uh, on showing on camera. So that's something I'm just going to do off camera.
and that's it. So now I just have these two screws and these are for this plate back here. So this plate is going to point forward and this one will go up here. Uh, so if I had to come to any conclusions, this is probably where the ESC is going to go. And again, something you could do is just put the screws through which I probably should have done with that one, and then just put the thread lock compound over here. And then this will just sit right on top. And it's nice because it helps as extra bracing. So I'm actually going to drive this one all the way in. Now, now I will come back to the first one, or the previous one, and tighten that one fully. Just wiping the excess off. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, good thing I did that because there's no way I could have done that without taking it off. Uh, here we go. So at this point, I can go ahead and move this because the differential is the next step. Uh, so we will move on to bag seven, which is right over here. Now, there is some grease included. There's something in here. Now, if you have a DR10, uh, DR10 comes with a plastic differential. So you have plastic gears. This one is a metal differential that you have here. One of the advantages of plastic differentials over metal though is there's less inertia. So acceleration is going to be greater. Uh, the downside is, well, it's definitely weaker. Uh, now here it comes with this uh, type of grease and I'm actually not sure what weight it is. Uh, so let me see if it tells me on here. If not, I'm going to put something different. Uh, so let's see, diff fluid 5463, 5463. All right, so normally I would build the kit uh, as is. So this is 500,000. Uh, so it's been sitting here for a while. It's very, very thick. Um, I'm not going to use 500,000 for now. I'm going to use 100,000. And this is much lighter oil, but the reason why I'm using 500,000 is uh, the following. If you saw my video, I think I had a video. I was talking about the, yes, I do. Uh, I was comparing the Losi uh, S22 drag car to the TR10 and then talking about the slash as well. One of the issues with that low C is it comes with very, very thick differential fluid. So what ends up happening is uh, if you apply a little too much torque, and when I mean a little too much torque, I mean a little too much torque, you really have to, uh, if you don't have an ESC that will do the work for you, uh, you really have to modulate the throttle. It will just slide. It always wants to slide the rear. Uh, so that's generally an issue when the oil is too thick in the differential. And with 100, if you have seen some of my videos running my DR10, it's very little input that I have to give uh, the steering to correct it. Uh, and the other thing too is this is something, maybe maybe one day I'll run the DR10, just chalk the lines. Uh, that way you can see the lane. Uh, but it stays in a relatively small lane. Whereas uh, some other vehicles that I've seen run, uh, I mean, they'll be all over the place. They'll go really wide and then come in. I mean, they, they essentially go into the other lane, which you're not supposed to do. So keep that in mind. I guess if you're just bashing out with friends, then who cares? But that's something to keep in mind. So here we go. We have all of these items. Now, something that I am going to be using because I have these, I'm going to be using green slime and I believe it's made by Team Associated as well. And it's this stuff right here. Uh, 
fortunately everything fell off, but it's just green slime. It's very good on all of these little O-rings uh, to use. Uh, I like it more than black grease. This one is very nice. Uh, I use it for your shocks as well. But uh, let me just move on and work with this. So right now there are two very small O-rings and one of the problems that you may have if you're working on a light colored surface is seeing them because uh, they almost disappear. Uh, but all right, I have these and I'm wondering if these would be more visible on the towel. Well, I'll go ahead and place them there. I just have to remember they're both here. All right, let me go ahead and slime these up. Actually, there's enough in my finger. Well, I'll put a little more. And uh, to be honest, a little goes a long way. You don't really need that much as long as everything's coated evenly. That's really all you need. Uh, now, the bearings are all greased up. They're good, they're smooth. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm gonna grab the differential. I'm gonna grab one of these ends. Now, slime these up as well. I'll go ahead and a little bit of slime here. And I'm gonna go here. And I should use the other hand. All right, there we go. Now this, uh, you need some assembly. First, you need one of those large O-rings. So these large O-rings will go, actually, sorry, I apologize, it's the washer. So take the large washer. Let me go ahead and just build these. Uh, all right. Then it's the O-ring. But I will put some slime on this. And the reason why I'm lubricating them is uh, you're going to have rubber pieces that are going to be sliding on these metal components. It just keeps them from catching on the metal and then tearing. That's the reason why. So now I can go ahead and take this O-ring and this O-ring can just sit right in here. I'll take the other O-ring. That one will go right in there as well. So you have that little section. Once you do that, here it's calling for, let's see, uh, gear diff O-ring small. So if you look at this little section right in here, those little tiny O-rings that were difficult to see, those will go right in there. So you are going to have to stretch them out and then just slide it in place. Uh, the camera is not zooming in. Here, let me see if I can fix that. Uh, that's not really helping. But anyway, that little tiny O-ring is now in here. So now, I can, there we go. Whew, found it. That will just slide and go in there. So it's in that little section. So both of these are now complete. And now that we have that, we can move on to the next step. So you grab one, uh, it doesn't matter which one, they're both the same. This will now go in here. Now I will apply some green slime right in here. Again, I'm probably overdoing this. This will now go in here. That is it wipe off the excess. The reason why I don't want this in here is because this will mix with the diff fluid and then it'll change it. Uh, but that's it. So now that this is in here, we can go ahead and grab one of these little pins and these pins will go, let's see, where are the holes? The holes are generally oriented along with this. So if you line this up, so line this up with this, then you can just drop the pin in there. And actually it's this one right over here. 
Uh, so if you look at the differential, one of these goes all the way through, so all the way in. So this goes all the way in, that's where you want the pin. This one stops, so it doesn't continue on. So this is where you set the pin through. And this is where you would really want those needle nose pliers. Let me go ahead and grab a pair. There it is. Now the only thing that holds that pin in there is actually the gear. Uh, so the gear, you're just going to drop the gear in and this gear will just snap in there and that's what holds it in. So that's it, nothing more. We can just set that there. Now you can grab your little Lincoln logs. They're not Lincoln logs, but they look like Lincoln logs uh, because of that little shape. Now, if you've never assembled these, uh, they go against each other, that, those little cutouts, uh, just like that. So it'll just make a little differential cross. So for these, you just need a gear on each end. So every end gets a gear. Actually going to do them separately. That way I can drop this in. Uh, then you have a washer. Now I am going to slime these up as well. Again, I may be overdoing this, but uh, what these washers do is they protect the gear in the case from rubbing against each other. Uh, that's the reason why I'm applying the slime, because that's, that's their purpose. Their purpose is to protect the gear from the case. All right, so now that this is in, I can actually go ahead and apply some diff fluid in here. And 100,000 is pretty thick as well. Try not to get air bubbles. This is one of the reasons why I'm holding it. After I heard that. All right, so now that I have that, now I can drop this in here. And the reason why I did this is so that it, the oil goes in uniformly. That's the reason why there's a piece of lint I'm trying to get out of the way. go and I want that to face the way it's facing so that the other little log just sits right in place uh, so that's it so now there's fluid underneath the gears that way when I fill it up I can just put fluid on top and I could put a little more fluid before I put the other gears in which I'll go ahead and do So the gears will just face each other this way. And then after that, uh, let's see. There we go. We'll go over here. There we go. Now we will drop this in here.
and I'm just going to press this in and everything fits perfectly. Uh, so now uh, I am going to put a little more fluid. Do not overdo the fluid. If you put too much fluid, when you try to close this with the gear in, keep in mind that this is going to take about a millimeter of space. So when you fill it up, leave a millimeter without any fluid because this will take up that empty space once it's in there. Uh, here, let me line it up as stuck to my finger, as you can see, right? So don't, I, I really don't need that much fluid anymore. Uh, and that's something you have to keep in mind because if you overfill it, that fluid has to go somewhere and uh, you're not going to be able to close the case properly, which can result in one of two things, uh, main things. One, uh, this will maybe bind inside of the gearbox, which is a major problem. Uh, or two, the you're not going to close it properly. Well, I guess I should say you're not going to be able to close it properly as and as a result, you can have two problems. That's really what I should have said. One, uh, you're gonna end up with a leaky case because there's going to be a gap. Uh, and this oil, even though it's thick, it will leak over time. If you have too much of a gap. Uh, the other thing too is uh, because you didn't close it properly, it could potentially bind. So if you've ever had, for example, a Tamiya Mini, and it sounds like a major coffee grinder, you probably have a loose differential screw. That's just a side note. Not that everybody that's watching this would have a Tamiya Mini, but just in case you were considering, now you know. Uh, the other thing I want to do too is I want to clean this surface. So I wanna make sure that this surface is clean so that the gasket sits there perfectly. Uh, you can let this sit a while. If you're using the other, the 500, you're gonna to have to let it sit a while. Uh, the 100 is a little more viscous, sorry, less, less viscous. So it will fill the voids a lot faster. Right now what I'm trying to do is fill in these gaps to get rid of that air. Here we go. And that's it. So I can go ahead and leave this here place it there and I can go ahead and build this other section. Uh, well, all of the components are there. Now I just need to slime this one up. And I'll grab the other pin, slide this through, drop the gear, everything moves as it should. Uh, now these bearings, don't worry about it because they, they fit over the little cups, so you can install those at the end. Uh, but now I can go ahead and grab this, double check everything, all right, the level looks Perfect. Uh, go ahead and line this up. Go ahead and grab this gear. Something that you can do is you can just go ahead and drop a uh, screw in here. Keep in mind the following. One, 
keep these away from oil or grease. Two, apply thread lock to it because these are going into metal. So I'll use one screw right in here. Now that it's there, I'm still holding it open, so I have not closed this completely. I want to get a second screw. I'm gonna uh, install this in the opposite side. So this will go over here. I'll go right in there. And that is closed. So notice how that closed flawlessly. There's no pressure, the oil wasn't pushing this out, not that you could feel the resistance over the uh, over the screen, uh, but that's what you want. Now, I'm not going to tighten this fully because I need to install these two first. I'm using the other screw to wipe the excess off. And now I will start tightening everything completely. Now there's a variety of different greases that you can use for the gears in the differential. You can use just regular black grease. Uh, black grease is gonna have more resistance compared to say lithium or silicone grease, but it also requires, uh, well, actually you have to maintain them all. Uh, but black grease gunks over time. And that's one of the reasons why I dislike it. Lithium grease, you have to go through and change it, clean it up because it's so light, it'll just throw it everywhere in the case. Uh, so it's gonna be up to you. I'm probably gonna use a silicone or lithium based grease, uh, but this is the differential. A differential does move uh, smoothly and I'm going to start with 100,000. Maybe I'll end up using 500,000 afterwards. But the only reason why I chose not to is this oil has worked great in my DR10 and the low C, the oil was incredibly thick. It just wanted to skid and slide every time it experienced a little too much torque. So keep that in mind. But we can now move on to step three. Oh, well, actually we already did that so we can we did all of this, uh, so we can move on over to bag eight. All right. Uh, let's see, bag eight. All right, so here we go. So bag eight is going to be the gearbox. Uh, which is always, it's always great to get to this stage. Uh, the funny thing is though, is uh, whenever I get to this stage and I just, I'm gonna ruin it for myself right now. Uh, I always get excited and happy because I feel like I'm almost finished with the kit. And then I have to do the shocks. And yeah, shocks, I, I really dislike doing shocks. I, I like building kits, not so much the shocks. I mean, I guess I could have just skipped ahead, done the shocks, and then it would have all been ready. I was about to open up another bag. Uh, let's go for this. Now, uh, quick little note. Uh, this comes with a slipper clutch. So there is a slipper clutch. Uh, once you run it, uh, you're gonna, you will decide what to do with it. Uh, the thing with slipper clutches are the following. One, if you're new getting used to the car well not necessarily new but uh, maybe you're new to the car and you're getting used to it uh slipper clutch is a great way if you don't have an esc where you can program stuff uh such as the rx8 by tekin or the uh macklin 
this is a way that you can modulate the torque, but it is going to take acceleration away. Uh, sometimes the nut does back out and then it will just start slipping like crazy. Uh, so you can always eliminate them. The only thing is, once you eliminate them, you really have to modulate the throttle. And that's something very, very important. So if you're getting started, getting used to it, came back, just keep the slipper. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and keep the slipper, try it out, and then I'm sure eventually I'm going to end up just tightening the whole thing. I may consider an eliminator at some point. Uh, the DR10, I do have an, uh, a clutch eliminator. Never installed it though. Uh, so I just keep driving the nut in. Uh, haven't had a chance, but at some point I will. Maybe it'll fit this one. Maybe I'll just install it on this one. We'll leave that one stock or as close to stock as possible. Uh, but here we go. These are all the parts. I just have to separate the screws by size. Uh, here we go. Right in here. Perfect. All right, now for the gearbox. Now here's the gearbox. Uh, this is a, it's considered a four gear transmission. The reason why it's a four gear transmission is because we have one, two, three. Differential is the fourth. Uh, so we have the two halves. Now these halves, when they mate, uh, they will be mating this way, just like that. So I will go ahead and just open them up just like this. Uh, for the gear portion, well, the gear portion is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, main thing is bearings. Don't forget the bearings. But go ahead and take some of these bearings and I'll go ahead and install them in here. So I'll install this in here. There's this big massive pin that will go in there. Oh, this is machined. There's there's no slack. I mean, that's that's good. Uh, yeah, absolutely no slack. As if you were six foot two. I'm kidding. That's a joke. Some of you will probably get the reference. Uh, wow. This one's not going in. This is a really tight fit. needs a little bit of elbow grease and the pin will go in as far as it needs at some point. Uh, so let's see, based on this, it should be pretty even. Still need to work on it a little more. So all I'm doing is I grab these pliers, I'm setting them like this, just hold the bearing, and then I'm just gonna use another set of pliers, mainly because I need something metal to push on this. And of course I went too far. All right, so this will be, this is fun. Still better than building shocks though. So those two are assembled. Now here's the shaft, perfect. Uh, so this, so this gear, this is the idler gear, this is going to go right in here and you'll see that it will just key in. Uh, so it goes on the opposite side of the threads and it just keys in, uh, which is beautiful. This is actually pretty strong. It's not a one piece, it's a two piece, but the way it's made, this should hold its own. But we have these in here. So now I can go ahead and drop these in. So one, two. Uh, this actually goes through here. I'll go in here. Uh, so you can go ahead and just place this one in here and that'll be fine. Now the differential, uh, the differential, the orientation usually matters uh, whether this goes on the right or the left. 
uh, based on the image. So if I were to line this up, so if you look at this shaft, so let me just go ahead and show you. So if you look at this, the gears, so this is oriented this way. So this is that case, just like this. The differential based on the way it looks is a horrible picture. I want to say it look, goes like this, but I guess I'll, I'll find out. Uh, okay, here it's already closed. So I'll go ahead and drop it, see how it fits. So if I drop it in here, all right, perfect. So the screws do go out. And the reason why is I dropped it in, everything meshes right. And the distance from the teeth looks right. Versus if I flip it over, well, first of all, now I have a bearing stuck in there. Uh, all right, I can always take that bearing out. All right, versus if I flip it over to where the screws are down, uh, the gears, I don't know if the camera picks it up, uh, the, the gears are a little farther out versus here, the gears fit perfectly. So all the teeth are lined up. So make sure that the screws are pointing out when you're assembling it like this. So if you're holding it like this, the screws go out. Now at this point, uh, really need grease. What I will end up doing is I'll grease this gear. And I am using a silicone grease. And some of the grease has already made it over here, but you can always put some grease on that other side. The only downside of doing that is now I have grease on top. So I guess I could just do this. It'll be much easier. All right, just like that. All right. Now I can go ahead and put some grease on the differential. Drop the differential in. And all the teeth are covering grease. So I am good to go. So that's it. Uh, so like I said, I use silicone grease instead. And now I can go ahead and cover it up. So I just drop this in. That will just be uh, did I, I, I missed, I missed two bearings. Hold on. Yeah, these are important bearings. So these bearings, let's go ahead and drop them. I'm using my five millimeter driver. All right. And I use this bearing to press that one in, go ahead and drop this in here. Now I can go ahead. So it's two bearings. I think it's two bearings. I saw two bearings. Now it's not closing. Maybe it's only one. I did something wrong. Oh, that's the problem with building vehicles at 4 a.m. Uh, this bearing goes inside. Okay, so don't forget to drop the bearing in there. That's why I was confused. All right, there we go. Perfect. So we have a bearing in there. Now we have this in here. Oh my God, probably the silliest thing I've done. Well, in this build, but that is it. So I'm just holding the case. Everything goes, everything moves smoothly. So that works. At this point, I go ahead and grab this plate. Just set it off to the side because you will be needing it. Uh, but you will be needing five 16 millimeter screws. One, two, three, four, five. So it's these right over here. And it's just the button screws. So these button screws right in here. Now grab the transmission, the gearbox here. The screws are gonna go back here. One, two, three, four, five. So they will go from this side. That's one, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh, oh. Five. 
There we go. I will get them started. Now it's very important that you tighten these evenly. And the reason why is, if let's just say you tighten this one fully, it'll open up your case on the opposite end. Uh, so that's the issue. So that's why it's important that you drive the screws close. So just get them close. And then once you get them close, then you can start driving them in, in a pattern. Here, let's see. Again, uh, I'm just getting them close. I'm not tightening them fully. It's still close, it's still somewhat loose. I will get all the screws close. Now, I'm also, as I tighten, I'm applying pressure right here. I'm not sticking my finger in there. I don't think you'll catch your finger in between, but maybe you could, so just be careful. I like the way this transmission feels. feels. I like the plastics. These are nice plastics. which is something I, well, I won't mention some other kits that I've built, but some other kits that I've built just feel cheap. These actually feel pretty good. So now I'm bringing all of the screws in and I'm tightening them all. And that's it. Check the transmission again, make sure nothing binds. You know, fling it just for good luck. I'm kidding, don't fling it. You can probably break something. Uh, but now I can go ahead and install the plate. So this plate, you will notice there's these three holes right here, but they're offset. Uh, this one is closer to center. This one's a little farther out. This one is even farther out. So if we just go ahead and place it here, right in there, we're going to need the countersunk screws. Now the countersunk screws, it's going to be three screws. They're right here. It's the 10 millimeters. So you use your two millimeter driver. Just going to get this one started. Once I have all three screws in there, then I'll start driving them all the way in. The reason why I'm doing this is so the plate doesn't move. Because if you tighten one of the screws all the way, or even two of them, uh, it may not sit properly. You may not be able to get the third screw in there correctly, and you may damage the plastics trying to force it in. So it's easier to just get the all the screws started, and then this one, I'm gonna start driving it in. So let's see. There we go. And here is the gearbox. So we can now move on. Uh, there's a few plates here. We'll see, it's probably to adjust something on the gearbox when we mount it. All right. So we're gonna go, uh, go ahead and move on with the slipper. Now there's two of these, uh, outer, inner, is there a difference? There is a difference in the way they are. Uh, so the outer, 
So if you look at these, see this one has that little hat, this one does not. So if you look at this, uh, the inner is the one with the little hat. So that's the inner, this is the outer. So the outer is the one that's smooth all the way through. So inner, this is going to seat right on the bearing. And these are keyed, so it should go in there, and then it should just seat, just like that. Now, for these pads, uh, I'm going over the pads. The pads will just go in there. They actually do a very nice job of sort of locking in place because of those cutouts. Uh, if you have, for example, a TRX-4, they don't have that. They're actually glued on. That's something to keep in mind. Now. The orientation on the gear, this usually goes on the outside, I believe, but there's no way of telling. Actually, it goes on the inside based on the picture. All right, so let me just see how this would fit if I saw, so, oh, yep, yep, this absolutely works. All right, so smooth surface on the outside, and now I can go ahead and drop this one, and this is it. Uh, at this point, you can now place the spring, so the spring will go in here. Now, one of the things with the spring, you don't have to do this, but I do. Uh, just grab the spring, grab some pliers, and then compress the spring. I don't wanna say I'm breaking it in, but if that's a way of looking at it. You grab this little hat, uh, the small portion goes toward the spring, that's where the spring sits. So here we go. So now it's spring is set. Now you can grab the nut and the nut will go here. This is it. Now this should be a seven millimeter. All right, now this is going to spin because of the differential. So some of the things that you can do is you can actually stick a driver on here or you can do this later. Once the wheels are on, seat the car just so there's resistance here and then do this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick this one in here, that one over there. And of course the other one is spinning. So let me grab my ruler so this can sit on the ruler. Put the driver uh, and I'm placing it over here. I'm gonna drive it all the way in and then just go back one turn. Although that might be too much, but we'll figure it out. All right, so let's go ahead and that's half and that's one turn. And that's it. All right, now, uh, these are gearbox spacers, so these spacers, uh, these adjust the height, so they will help with the height of the gearbox. It's uh, really what you need. Now, these you have to install first, so first we will deal with these. Uh, then we have a little carbon fiber piece. So if we look at these little items, so these are these items here, you have this block of plastic, that's that rear one. and. To be honest, the color is horrible on this manual, uh, but this is going to go on the back. So it's gonna go right up there and that's for the height as well. And then you will have this piece right over here. This one will go on the front. And now this one's aluminum. This one, let's see, it sits this way. So this, that small little L, that's the top. This long little section, that's the bottom. So it'll fit right in here. So here, you'll be able to control the height. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll put the carbon piece over here for now. And the screws that I'm gonna be needing, uh, based on what I see here, let's see, eight millimeter and 
10 millimeter, so eight millimeters. These are these uh, 10 millimeters, slightly longer ones. And the 10 millimeter go on the rear. So this is the 10. And when you install this, it goes from the back. Now this seems to be uniform. Nothing's labeled top, bottom. So this one doesn't matter the way it's here. Now the question is, put the gearbox See, so the gearbox would go in here. So I'm doing this to get an idea. So if the gearbox goes in here, this will give me an idea of where I want to mount it. So I mount it, all right. And it looks like I'm going to be mounting it in the, so from the top, it's the second hole. Oh my God, it's in the diagram. Sorry about that. Uh, so it wasn't the diagram. So it's the second hole right here on the top. So from the top, second hole. 10 millimeter screws go in the back. Sit in the car down just because it's easier to install those screws. So these here, that's the reason why. Uh, trying to keep it in camera and then tighten them is just a challenge. So that piece is set. So before I install this one, I'm just going to grab the gearbox and I'm gonna set this in here. this. So now I will go ahead and install this. So I need these screws. I need thread lock. Now instead of putting the thread lock now, uh, you could have stuck the screw in first because you are going to use some thread lock in here. Now this will go right here. So then you just put both screws in there, put the thread lock, then you bring the piece and then made everything. There we go. All right. Uh, now, 
one thing to note is the following. So we're gonna need that carbon fiber piece. So that carbon fiber piece is going to be a little L that goes over here for the transmission. And then the question is the spacers. So the spacers are going to determine the height of the gearbox, how high you want the gearbox, how low you want it. Now, uh, I'm going to begin with the lowest setting and then I'll probably move back. The reason why I'm going with the lowest setting is it's a mid-motor four-gear transmission, so it's probably going to apply a lot of force to the wheels. That's the reason why. So I may not want all of the weight transfer. Maybe I do, but this is going to be a 13.5 motor. Uh, the higher up, so the higher up the gearbox, I'm exaggerating, this is gonna create a greater uh, pendulum effect or think about it, uh, torque, force times lever arm. So it's there's gonna be more weight transfer. That's the reason why. So the question is, do I want the weight transfer? Maybe, maybe not. As of now, uh, I'm just gonna go with the lowest setting, uh, which I believe is one spacer. Uh, actually, I don't even need a spacer. Uh, so the spacers I can probably just leave off and then just do it this way, keep it as low, and then I can put one spacer in, two, three see how it reacts. Uh, but now I just need to put this one in here. So this one, uh, let's see, it's 10 millimeter screws that hold it to the aluminum piece. And then it's eight millimeter screws that go in front that will go into the gearbox. Uh, so let me go ahead and grab them. So these are the 10. So we'll do that. That's a nice tight fit. Go ahead and put the thread lock here. Oh, great. Don't get this all over your hands as I get it all over my hands. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, gearbox. Here is the gearbox. Did I make a mistake? I did make a mistake. This one goes in after. All right, so this carbon fiber piece locks everything in place. That's my mistake. All right, so we'll do that. Uh, all right, so again, I'm not planning on using the spacer. Maybe I'll use one. Maybe I'll use one. Let's see, is that the correct fit? Maybe I do need one, maybe not. All right, so there's one spacer in there. Why is this not sitting properly? Stall this backwards. Maybe I did. Wait, are these all the same? Oh, no, they're not the same. No, they are. I'm checking the spacers right now just to see if they're all the same. Yeah, they are the same. And these are just lock in place. All right, that's the way it works. Uh, so using one spacer, so one spacer is zero. So you actually do need one that is zero. I'm not going to use the other two. Apparently you can get another one to a fourth but let's do zero. Oh, come on. All 
All right, let's try this again. So if I place it in here first, I'm gonna install it this way. All right, so I found the problem. And I'm gonna blame the color on the, <laughs> the manual for this one. Uh, so this little block, this block back here in the shock tower, I mounted this incorrectly. So that is the issue. So let me go ahead and show you. So I mounted it this way. It does not go this way. It goes this way. Actually, it may go the top way, but I cannot really tell based on the color. Uh, let me actually go this way. So there's a rounded side and a flat side. The flat side, I believe, goes up. So I'll go ahead and mount that up. The only reason why I'm thinking the flat side goes up is because that's where the gearbox is going to uh, sit. So if that's where the gearbox is going to sit, then I would assume it would be flat. All right. So that should allow the gearbox to actually slide in and click in. Now I'm placing this in here, but I'm sure once I set the gearbox, I'm probably going to have to adjust this up or down based on the amount of spacers that I'm using, because I think this position is going to be for three spacers. So I may actually end up having to drop it down to the lowest, uh, but let's go ahead and see. Uh, so I have the spacer. Now these spacers, uh, this sort of flatter surface, the even surface that goes down, this part with the lip that goes up against the gearbox. And then this side with the larger taper that goes forward. And then the other side that goes back. So I'll go ahead and hold it like this and I'll drop it for good luck. Just like that. Go ahead and place it. Uh, something else that you could do is you could put some screws in. All right. And absolutely. So because I'm only using one spacer, I'm going to have to drop these. So I'll go ahead and do those. All right, so this is dropped. So one spacer in there. Gearbox. Okay, so. No, no, I'm not going to do it. Just try to drop this in. And now I'll flip this. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and install the screws. I'm not going to drive them all the way in. I just want them to hold the gearbox. Uh, so these are those four long screws. You only have four uh, countersunk screws. Those are the ones that go in here. Maybe I should do the bottom instead of the top. Let's see. 
Yeah, I'll just go ahead and screw the, the bottom all the way. Now, quick note of holding the chassis this way, whenever you're tightening up the screws, you want to lift up on it so that you're not bending it in the center as you're driving the screws in. Uh, so that's why you probably notice that I keep bouncing the chassis up and down. That's because I don't want to apply pressure here and bow the chassis as I'm installing these screws. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing that, <laughs> holding it this way is so I can try to keep it in the camera. That's honestly the, the only reason why. And like I mentioned, the only reason why I'm showing this whole thing and I'm not speeding through it, you know, fast camera, is so that you can work on yours along. You can get an idea of how long it's going to take. Now I can go ahead and do the top brace. So it'll be this one. So again, flat side goes forward. That little M shape goes toward the back. Now there was already thread lock on these, on the front screws. The rear screws are not going to need thread lock because they're going to be going into plastic. So I'll go ahead and install two screws right here, one, two. These are not tight yet. I'm not going to tighten them fully until these back screws are installed. And again, this will affect the tweak of the vehicle. So you want to do this on a hard surface. I will double check that later once everything's fully built. I will install these back here, and then once these two are installed, I'll actually go ahead and tighten all of the screws. go on to bag nine. Uh, just a quick little note before I go into the bag nine. Uh, so there are three spacers total. You can get a fourth one. They correspond to these holes right here. So hole one, one spacer, two, two, three, four, uh, and then do the same back here. So I have it in the lowest setting, which is one. Again, I may change it, lift the transmission up and down. We will see as of now, I'm gonna try it out in the lowest setting and then I can work my way up.
And there is such a thing as too much traction. So what can end up having is you have too much traction, this thing just lifts up and your, your weight, well, I shouldn't say too much traction. Uh, too much traction can be an issue if you're taking turns, then you can roll. Uh, what I should say is there is such a thing as too high of a center of gravity and then have too much weight transfer. So there's such a thing as too much weight transfer to the rear wheels. Next thing you know, you hit that wheelie bar really hard, it'll just throw you off. All right, let's see, three, three. Should have four. Oh, there it is, there's four, all right. Now for these, I am going to use black grease. It does come with this little container of black grease. Uh, I am just going to try to finish up this one. I prefer the tubes, uh, but I'll, I'll just try to finish this one up. Uh, all right. Now, the build for this is actually pretty simple and straightforward. Now the pins, if you look at the pins, uh, just make sure to check them. They might all be the same size. Sometimes they're different, but these all look the same size. Uh, but you have this little barrel. So the barrel is going to go in through here. So this will fit right in there. But you need to grease this up first. So I'm just going to dab this in grease. And I'll grab the little barrel grease this one up as well, and I'll slide the barrel. Now the holes, you want the holes to be visible through there. Uh, so that is an important component. And the reason why is because of the pin, the way the pin goes. I'll just do that. Uh, so we'll grab this pin. This pin will go through here. And right in there. Now, the only thing that holds that pin is the bearing. So the bearing is what goes in there and holds the pin. So once you have this, now this can go in here, the bearing will sit in there. And then once you have that, you can grab the other bearing and you can go ahead and drop that bearing in there. And then once we do that, uh, in some vehicles, there's a shim that goes here, and that's to, to protect the bearing from uh, the pins, but this does not have it. This will just go in here. And the reason why this does not have it is because of the way the hexes are made. Uh, the hexes are not flat. This camera does not like focusing. Uh, but that, this little section here sits right on top of the bearing. That's the reason why. And the plastic actually clips, uh, should clip, should clip on. Go ahead and use some pliers. There we go. All right, the plastic just clips on and holds the pin. So it's the plastic that's riding on the bearing. Uh, that pin is never riding on the bearing. If you have a Traxxas vehicle, the pin rides on the bearing, that's why you Definitely need that pin. Uh, everything moves freely. So we'll go ahead and set that there and we'll go ahead and do the next one. So again, I'm going to go ahead and grease this up, grease everywhere. The rest of the grease that's in my finger, I'll use it to grease that little barrel. Little bar that little barrel will just go in here, make sure that is exposed. I'll try to wipe some of this off in here. All right, and now I can grab the pin. I can get the pin started slightly. Guess I got lucky, so maybe they are different sizes. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's too far. There we go. So I'll slide this in. 
and there we go. Grab the bearing. Bearings in there. We'll grab this other bearing. And that is in there. Slide the pin. All right, now I just use pliers to lightly press this in. You can actually use a wheel nut and then drive it in. That works as well. Uh, but now I have both. This one is free, everything's great. And I can now go ahead and install them. The installation is the same as all the other pins. Uh, now the difference is these go rear to, to front, but you have those little tiny retaining screws. So at this point, uh, these are uh, not the same. So if you look at these, you actually have a left and a right and they are marked. So this one's L, that one's R. So this one's going to go on this side. This one's going to go on that side. We'll go ahead and place this in here. Make sure that's cupped in there. And I will go ahead and grab the pin, slide the pin in. There we go, and that moves freely, that is great. If this falls out, don't worry about it because it probably will since you don't have the link. So it's actually not important to do that uh, little step. But let me go ahead and grab this, go ahead and set it here, right in there, 1.5. There we go, this moves freely. And that is now in place. Now the ball studs, the ball studs, these I'm going to install in the center. So these will actually go right here in the center. Uh, later on, you can choose to install them in a different hole and that's fine. But for this, I'm going to go ahead and follow the manual and just do the center hole. That concludes this. Now, uh, the next step is a really fun step. I, I'm i kidding. Uh, so we have to do the turnbuckles. Turnbuckles are annoying. Uh, actually, I don't know what's worse, turnbuckles or shocks. I, I think it depends on the shocks. Uh, some shocks are easier to work with than others, or maybe not a, as big of a pain. 
Now, all of these links appear to be the same size, uh, but the turnbuckles, let's do these all the same. Let me go ahead and line them up. Oh, yeah. Well, this is nice. Uh, everything is the same. So the only thing that we have to do is we just have to look at the orientation. There should be a mark here for left. Uh, all right, so the, here's the mark. So this is left thread. Uh, just make sure that that line is on the same side. Uh, usually you want to keep that line on the left side of the vehicle, but if you don't and you put it on the right, that's all right. Just make sure they're all on the same side. So they're either all to the left, all to the right, but usually that line goes to the left side of the vehicle. And normally that is left a left hand thread. So that's something else you want to keep in mind. So when you tighten this, the mark is on this side. This one I'm actually going to spin to the left as I'm tightening. I'll go ahead and do that. And then just grab a driver. And uh, they're all different lengths. Uh, let's see if I have a 40, let's see, that's a 23. Are they all 23? Okay. So the steering is 23. All right, so we can do the steering first. Now the side without the mark, that's a right hand thread. I'll go ahead and do this, grab the other driver. Now, if you take the manual, uh, this should be to scale. So you can just overlay this. Yeah, this is to scale. Uh, so you can just go ahead and overlay this on top and then shrink it, expand it, whatever you need to do. Uh, this will go here. So I'll get them all started. So again, I'm not gonna fast forward to this. Uh, that way, you, if you're following along, it will just keep the pacing. Uh, so left side, here we go. Now it is kind of nice that 
all of the turnbuckles are the same. And, and by the same, I mean they have the same rod ends. And the reason why is I don't have to worry about different rod ends and, and placing which where. So the only thing I'm gonna have to worry about later on is the lengths, so the length of each turnbuckle. All right, now I can worry about the lengths. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I will go ahead and take these. Uh, that's the longer one, no big deal. Uh, let's see, so I need 23, 28, 25. I'll take two of the shorter ones and I'll turn these into a 23. Again, uh, lines on the left side and I do that on purpose so I know which is which, so this one's right threaded. So I tighten this all the way until the threads just disappear. Now this one's going to be left threaded. So I'm actually switching sides. I should switch hands as well. Uh, just so that I stay consistent in front of the camera. And I'm gonna tighten this until the threads disappear. And I'm gonna need a lot more. So now uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to count turns. So the same amount of turns I do to, to one side, I will do to the other. So I'll go here. So I did seven turns. Let's go here. Now this one's left. Don't go too fast, and the reason why I'm saying that is the plastic actually does heat up. Let's go ahead and grab this. 23. All right, so this is a little too close. So I'll back one side. One turns about a millimeter. And, oh, that's 23, so we are good. Let's go here, stall this, and then hold it.
All right. Uh, so I have my 23s. Now my 23s, those are my, are they my steering? Oh, they're not my steering. They're my uh, camber. Go ahead and place this here. Oh, great. Maybe you can go here, hold it, and turn this one. make sure I installed this correctly. Yes, all right. So that marks on the left side, uh, this mark on the left side, so I'll go there. This is actually one of the things I find annoying about team associated turnbuckles. They clip off easily. Well, when you're working on them, when you're driving, they actually hold on quite well. Uh, perfect. So now we can move on to, we have, uh, 28s and 25s. Uh, let's see, the 25s are the rear. So I can go ahead and just do the rear just so this doesn't look like this, and then I'll do the steering after. 28, let me just get an idea. Oh, not much. Not much on these. All right, so let's see. So that's the left, this is the right. So we Go and this one. I got too far. And let's see, where's the line? Okay, so that's the line. This will go like this, maybe like that. Oh too far. This needs to face down. All right, here we go. 29, not a big deal. Now, once you've finished the vehicle, obviously go through and check everything. Here we go. That's it. Perfect. Now we need another 28. Let's see how far. Side perfect. So it's right hand. Oops. Just a little more. All 
All right. Perfect. Now I can work on the steering. So the steering, uh, these will be 28s. Uh, the main thing again, make sure all the lines are on the left-hand side. Uh, so we're almost finished with the turnbuckles. Uh, let's see. Wait, I made a mistake. These were supposed to be 25. I set them at 28. Not a big deal, I can close them later. Uh, or I can just remove them and use them for the steering now. That'll be easier. Really wanted to do the rear ones first, but since these are 28s now, This one. So now I can do the 25s. So rears will be 25s, and I need quite a lot on this one. Let's see, right to the sides, perfect. Uh, so I drove this until I could no longer see the threads, but I need to drive it even more. So I'll do that. Now this is the left side.
let's see. Uh, so that's it for the turnbuckles. Uh, all right, I am going to have to check this uh, later on, but uh, I'm now going to go ahead and continue with the best part, which is uh, bag 11 with the shocks. All right, bag 11. I can actually set the car off to the side. Uh, bag 11's the shocks, and the shocks are the funnest part. I mean, they're not, but. That's, that's what I dread the most. All right. Now we have the springs. Now the suspension is the part that requires a lot of tuning. Now I'm looking at the springs uh, to see if there's a difference, uh, if there's markings. Uh, there are no markings. And they appear to all be the same. So all four springs. Nope. Hold on. The difference in coils. Let's see, one, two, three, all right, so those match. These match as well. That means that if these match, and these match, uh, so springs are the same. So I'll leave the springs, have the collars. Uh, now, you are going to need the green slime if you don't have green slime. You can also use grease. I like the green slime. So I'm going to be using this. Uh, that's the same thing I used when I was doing the differential. It does come with oil. Uh, now, it does not say on the bottle what kind of oil it is. Oh, green slime. There's a part number for a green slime. Uh, 1105. Uh, let's see, the oil is 5422, so that's the shock oil, and it's the same front rear, and it appears to be 30 weight. Uh, I'll go ahead and fill it with the factory, but I may end up changing the rear. So this is 30 weight. Let me just leave it and give it away. I've got it. No, I'll use this. All right. Shock bodies. Uh, they're all the same. All right. So they're all the same. Let's see. These are usually different. Maybe they are, maybe not. Am I missing one? one two. Oh, it's over here. All right. Uh, these are the bottom caps. These are for the shock towers. These are the top caps. Alright. Bottom of the sections. Pistons, spacer, rod ends. Shafts. Now, one of the things I will mention right now that I dislike about this uh, kit is there's no thread here, so no screw. I have to use clips. And I really dislike using clips. I strongly, strongly just like using clips. I wish this thing had shocks similar to uh, the buggy where this is machined and then the piston fits in here and then just a screw on top. That I think would have been 
Great, that would have been the best. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, eight. All right, there's eight. Hopefully I don't break an clip. It's always a possibility. All right, so we have four of those and we should have eight of these, which I'm currently off camera, but it's the, these red O-rings. having trouble getting them out of the bag. They sort of get stuck. They get stuck to the plastic, that's the issue. Uh, there we go. So I have one, two, three, four pairs. And, here we go. Put these over here. Oh, actually I'll put them here. Prop, so these, these are really difficult to see on this color. Uh, the only reason why I have this, I, I actually have this towel on top of my pit mat and it's just so it can absorb uh, fluids. That's the only reason why. Uh, I'll place them there. I should hopefully be able to see them. Let's see, I have eight of those. Perfect. All right, great. So now I can begin assembly. Uh, and the assembly, you want to start with the Eclipse. So the Eclipse, start with the bottom. It's always easier, well, maybe the top one would, wouldn't be too bad. Uh, but if you start with the top, make sure that you line line up both of the sides correctly. And so the reason why is if you don't, you can bend the E-clip and then once you bend it, uh, you will probably end up breaking it. Uh, there's really no straightening them out. That went in smoothly. And take your time with the Eclipse. Really take your time. Sometimes they'll shoot out and then really don't want to be looking for them. Let's try it again. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is just to make sure that the little tab there on the E is actually inside of the groove. Uh, that's the only reason why I'm doing it. And when you push the E-clip down, try to make sure that you're pushing it down straight. There we go. Uh, now you can go ahead and grab the pistons. So I'm just put a piston there. And then uh, you just need to set the clip right on top. Uh, so this is why I like doing the top clip last because, because then I just drop it for good luck. This players are magnetized. But you can just set it like this and then push it in. That's that's the reason why. Uh, so this one's set. And that little shiny part, I'm facing that down on each one. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. There we 
go. All right, there we go. Now I have to assemble everything else. I go ahead and get the slime ready. So we'll grab this shock body. Now, all of this has to be slimed. So, so that's why it's important You can see all the parts so you know what you've slimed, what you have not slimed. In case of this part, here, I'm just going to grab these, slime them up, place them back if I can. Now they stick to everything. And I will also slime the shafts. All right. Should have slimed these as well. Uh, and I believe these are the externals, but well, let me go ahead and do them. Uh, it just helps that way they don't get caught up. Go ahead and take the shaft. Now there's an O-ring that's gonna go in here that's gonna be this small white one. So you're going to put this small white one. That's gonna create a seal with the actual cap. Now this one's going to go in later. Now you can go ahead and place the shaft now if you want, that's fine. Uh, I wouldn't, not yet. Uh, but now that you have that, you're going to grab one of these little plastic hats so they look like a little hat. Don't confuse them with this other plastic spacer. So it's it's, uh, it's not focusing in, but it looks like a little hat. The small N goes against the body. The large flat surface goes on the outside. So this will go in and just make sure that when you place it in there, it doesn't rotate, doesn't turn. And there we go. Once you do that, then you can get an O-ring, so you'll install an O-ring. After the O-ring, you get one of the other spacers, so those black little spacers, and then followed by an O-ring. Uh, and then once you have that second O-ring, then you grab the cap. Now these caps are plastic, even if they were aluminum, it doesn't matter. So go left first, and then once you feel it click, then start going right. And the reason why is you don't you don't want to cross thread them. Now grab the, this before you tighten this fully. Grab the shaft, slide it in. Now you can tighten this fully. And the reason why is if you tighten it fully first, 
it will compress the o-rings which will make it tighter on this but then you're going to run the threads through them and you could potentially damage them so that's the reason why you do it this way uh, so this one is set that is one we'll go with the next body same thing grab one of the white o-rings go ahead and slide it in right in here we do the same thing grab one of these hats uh, remember this the broad side or the nice flat surface that goes toward the bottom so the the small little part of the hat goes inside and I'm saying the bottom because this would be flipped over uh, grab an o-ring install an o-ring grab a spacer drop the spacer in there's the spacer follow it by an o-ring there's the o-ring and now you can grab that bottom cap Go left, once you feel it click, go right, do not tighten it all the way, grab this, now you can tighten it all the way once it's through. That's it, that's two. Forgot this one. through it's tight push this through and make it tight do not over tighten these because you can break them so be careful with that uh, now that we have these we can install these so this will go here one will go there and one will go inside of here uh, we'll just go to the next page just so we are on track um, here we go. So we have the top, so we'll put an O-ring top of each one. That's one. Two. Uh, all right, now at this point you can go ahead and put the oil. Now I will go ahead and do these first. I'll put the collars. I like putting the collars on first. So I'm actually skipping a step and doing these. So these O-rings are going to go right inside and the purpose for these is to create some resistance so that they do not uh, tighten or loosen. By tighten or loosen, meaning go up or down, um, because these are the preload. So this is what sets the preload. And there we go. All right, so just make sure that's in there nice and smooth. And then these will go in here. So do the same thing again. You're gonna go left. And then once you feel it click, then you start going right. That way you don't cross thread it. You can cross thread aluminum as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And these are pretty fine threads, which is the, uh, the issue.
All right. So I will go ahead and put some oil in here. If you don't have something somewhere to, to put the shocks, don't worry about it. You can always just grab a grab a piece of cardboard, cut some holes in, put it on top of something, maybe some a cardboard box or Tupperware, whatever it is, and then just fill them. But this just makes it easier for you to put the oil in there and then let them sit and let the air bubbles rise. Oh, too much on that one. too much on that one as well. Right. So you should have a small little meniscus. Uh, on the oil, so you'll see the oil sort of dip down. All right, now that that is set, I am going to use a little towel. Just, I'll hold it here. And I'll grab one of these caps. Now for the caps, go left and then right. Now I will tighten it fully.
right? I thought it was about 20. And I will open up the cap a little, pushing the shaft up. Closing it again, all right. Do the next one. There we go. So there's two. When you're pushing the shaft up, make sure that you push it slowly. You don't want to push it too far, uh, sorry, too fast or else uh, you may not bleed it correctly. Now, right now there is pack. So once you're finished, you will have no pack. Just bring it up slowly. Hold it. Then tighten it. And then this will slowly start coming out compared to before. Uh, this out of the way all right now uh, let's see the spacers all right so two of the shocks are gonna get these six millimeter spacers and the shocks with the six millimeter spacers I actually can't tell if they're the front or the rear might be the rear but I am going to add something to the front one so let me just double check uh, build two front shocks. All right, so the front shocks have this little spacer. Uh, I'm going to build them with the spacer, but later on I'm going to measure and see if I need more. And the reason why is on the DR10, I ended up adding some of these nylons, these 440 nylons. These are the size that you need. Uh, they look like this, they're about a millimeter 50. And I did that so that the bottom doesn't hit the pavement. So when it dives, it doesn't scratch up the bottom. That's the reason why. So I use them as limiters. Now here, uh, six, is it going to be enough? I'm not sure. And the reason why is because on DR10, I actually ended up using a lot more than six millimeters, but that's what it calls for. That's what I'm going to end up using. Now, a very important step, and we're getting to that step now. Now, if you don't have shock pliers, that's fine. You can just use a towel. But the main thing and something that is many times overlooked 
is uh, the to measure the shocks. So whenever you are installing the links, make sure that you are measuring uh, the shock length so that both of them are the same overall length once you install these. Because keep in mind that maybe one of them has two extra turns going in, uh, that will create a difference in the length. So that's very, very important. Something that's generally overlooked. Do not overdo this uh, because you can damage the threads or if you don't damage the threads, this could actually go through or start pushing through here. And then the pivot ball is not going to fit in properly. All right, here we go. Looks like it's 14.5 roughly. Keep in mind I was holding it at an angle, so it might be 15. Sorry, 14, 14. Uh, all right, this one already has the spacer, good. So if you notice this one, this one still needs two millimeters. So one more, because again, I want them to be as even as possible. All right, 14. So these two are set. These are the fronts. We'll go ahead and load them with a spring. You place the spring, then you grab this, and that will go right in here. I'm gonna do that, uh, and that's it. So actually, before doing this, I should have gotten the car. Actually, I can't do this, not until there's tires. So you have to have the tires, the body, everything. Well, really just the tires, and then once you have the tires, I just set it down, uh, which I do have the tires. So I'll just, uh, I need to finish them. So I'll figure this out in a bit. Let me just continue on. And we'll stay. All right. These seem way too stiff, way too stiff. Uh, I'm gonna have to see what the DR10 springs are. Mm, way too stiff. All right.
Maybe they are the same springs. Now, one of the things to note is, uh, according to the manual, the stroke should be 21, and I did 24. So let me go ahead and just run these a little more and try to get them to 21. Maybe it's just for the rear. Oh wait, no. Was 14, 14 plus six, that's 20. Uh, they are calling for 21, so this is 19, so that means I have to back this one out. Now uh, the front side did 20, that might be fine. I may leave them, so that's 14 plus that six millimeter spacer. Uh, all right. The rears I will do 21. I'm just remeasuring, making sure these are the precise length they need to be, as well as the same length to each other. That's the fronts. Sorry, the rears. Uh, the rears are the ones without that six millimeter spacer. All right, I can go ahead and install the little eyelets. So these are all the same. You just need to press them in. So these will just press in pretty straightforward. Now, these go on top. This is where the shocks are going to install. Uh, so these are the nuts for the shocks, and these are the screws for the bottom. So we can go ahead and mount them up on the car now. 
So let's go ahead and move this over here. All right. So that would be the falling page. All right. Now, the long screws, uh, because they have to go through the arm in the center, those are going to go in the front. So just make sure that you grab the ones with the spacers. So this one has the spacer. This will go in here. Uh, so the screw will go, grab one of these. Uh, you can either place it on the top of the shock or you can just go ahead and place it right on the screw. It's up to you, whichever way you want to do it. I'll go ahead and, and place this right here. Uh, now for the front, I'm going to go in the outer on the shock tower, inner on the arm. So I have them as straight as possible. I may change that. The only reason why is because I want as much troop as I can get. That's the reason why. Does this have the spacer? This has the spacer. So this is the other front. Then it's just a 5.5 millimeter driver. Now these are somewhat of a pain. Once you have if something in here, you can't work on the shocks. Luckily, that's the battery. See if he goes to the next one on the arm. And that's it. Do not over tighten these, you can damage the arms. Uh, but here we go, that's the front. Uh, once it's fully dressed, then I'll see uh, if these shocks are too much or just right. Uh, one of the things that I am going to do is I'm going to move the collar as far up as I can without the spring bouncing up and down. Uh, so I'm just See how the spring bounces up and down just a little, so I'll bring it down. And then afterwards, you want to measure the gap, make sure it's the same on both sides. That's about two millimeters right in here on the collars. All right, now I will Move on to the rearward shocks. So I'll go ahead and install this, install that. You drop it for good luck. Right, here we go. 
uh, outer on the shock tire, I will go inner on the arms. Uh, these holes are for the sway bar, so don't mount them there. Now, one of the things that uh, you probably notice about the arms, the way I set them up, is uh, pretty straight. Uh, this is what's going to lower the car. Now, uh, here, you can already tell I have way too much camber. Uh, that's something I'm going to adjust later on. That's something you adjust. Uh, I'm use my setup station, but once everything's complete, I'm not going to do it now. Uh, but here we go. So now the next page, that's uh, the next page. Uh, the next step would be uh, bag 12. So we have bag 12, so that's the sway bar. Uh, which is nice that it comes with it. You do not need a sway bar, you really don't. Um, now, I forget which one of my videos I was explaining the purpose of the sway bar. Maybe I'll just do a video dedicated to sway bars. Uh, the sway bar just, it helps. Uh, it helps with traction, but this thing's massive. Uh, it's very thick. So if you don't install the sway bar, maybe you need it, maybe not, but the sway bar, because it's only a rear sway bar, it's going to give you more steering. That's really what it's going to do. So, uh, the way a sway bar works, just in case you haven't seen that other one, is as this wheel, so there's a wheel here, as this one, let's just say this one's leaning, compressing, so now the vehicle is doing this. Right, so the vehicle is doing this. So this one starts compressing. This is just a spring, so this is going to apply tension and it's going to push this wheel down. Uh, now, the purpose of the sway bar isn't to lift the other wheel. Uh, let's see if this fits in the camera. Well, it kind of does. All right, so you, let's just say you're turning or it goes off balance, whatever. It's going like this. So this is going to be pushed up like this. All right. Now, if I were to remove the shocks and install the sway bar, you would notice that if I push this up, this one's going to be pulled up by the sway bar as well. But that's, that's not the purpose of the sway bar. The purpose of the sway bar is to help use this tension to create a spring effect here to push this down so that it rolls the car back to a stable position. That's the purpose of the sway bar. Uh, so as the car leans this way, sway bar is going to push this down. So it's going to move the chassis and roll it back to the other side using this as the tension. Uh, so a sway bar is just a spring. That's really all it is. Now here's the thing though. Uh, the rear sway bar, it actually affects the opposite corner. So one, Rear sway bar is going to affect the front. Front sway bar is going to affect the rear. Uh, so with the drag car, if this is going down, this wheel is going to be lifting, right? Because of the way the chassis is turning, just like this. So by the sway bar rotating the chassis over and applying pressure over here, it's going to set this wheel back down. So that's the advantage of sway bar on these drag cars. Uh, that way you're not, you know, rolling off on the side only using the outer wheel and then losing control. So it helps you maintain the front stable and pointed forward. Uh, all right, let's see. Get of those. All right. Those four and then these. Great, perfect. To go ahead.
Now, when you drive these in, I am going to drive it until I can no longer see the threads. Uh, I do not see any instructions on how long these should be. So as soon as I lose the threads, I'm going to stop and then I'll measure and I'll do the other one the same so that both of them are the same length. There we go. So we'll start the other one, then I'll measure actually. All right. At 28. Looking at overall length, 20. Oh, well, that works. Uh, 28. So uh, it's 28 top to bottom. That's how I left them. And now these would go here. This is where the challenge comes in. So I could set this on table press down or I could just use the pliers. Uh, the only thing is uh, I'm going to install these first. The only reason why is once I apply pressure, I don't want to warp the eye of the rod end. There's two, so we have the links. All right, now these links are going to go back here. And let me just, all right, which way do they go? So it's the 12 millimeter. Uh, this is strange. All right, that is correct. Oh, wrong hole. Uh, I'm going through the front. It's still away. All right. What am I missing? So these go here, this is where the sway bar goes. Uh, so the part that I'm doubting uh, is actually this part, these screws. Uh, these are two millimeter screws. They do fit in here uh, perfectly. Uh, so I can go ahead and install them. The only thing is, uh, I'm not sure if I'm missing a part, maybe, Maybe in another bag. Hmm. Well, I'm going to skip over to this. I'm going to ignore that. See, it says, this is the interesting thing. All right, so it says three millimeter by 12 button head screws. The only screws I have are these. Oh. I just figured it out. All right, uh, the link, the link goes on the inside. Uh, so the link, this link goes on the inside. Now really quick, see that little nut portion? That's going to rub up against the arm. So imagine this is the arm. So this is sitting like this. This will go right in here up and to here. And the screw goes in from over here inwards. That's the reason why the screw kept going in. I couldn't figure it out. Now here, just given, normally I would put the thread lock on, on the, threads of the screw. 
Here I'm going to make an exception. I'm gonna place them right over here. So I'm just dumping a little bit of thread lock compound in here. And now I can go ahead and grab this. This should be so 1.5. 1.5. Uh, this is actually a two millimeter, not a three millimeter. Well, it doesn't really matter. Unless it fits. All right. Right, and that's it. So the link is here. Just pointing them back. Now I can work on the other link. This is a step that would have been easier before assembling all of this. Now, uh, one of the ways, so I'm, I'm actually just using my fingernail to hold the hex right here on the link, but as soon as it touches the plastic, it just holds. And that's it. So this is on, moves as it should. Now we can move on to the Sway bar. So the sway bar is going to sit right back here. It's going to go inside of these holes right in there. Then there's a set screw, which I should have placed the set screw first. And the instructions, it's the last step. Place the set screw in first, uh, and then worry about everything else. Now I have, let's see, I have these four, uh, two thick ones and two thin ones. The thick ones go up against this. So let's see, uh, is there, these marked left and right. Don't see a marking left and right. Uh, so this little L looks like an L, just like this. All right, so if it looks like this, flip it. That's the right side. So it's the L, it just follows this line. That one will go there. This one would go here. So there's the L, flip it, goes in there. Sway bar sits right on top, just like that. Now you have these smaller ones. Uh, oops, just drop them for good luck. Uh, there's a larger piece and a smaller section. Uh, the larger goes on top, just like that. So just look at this, there's that small piece, large piece, so the large, so these little sections, that's larger, this is smaller. So larger section goes on top, just like that. And now I can go ahead and grab a screw. I'll drop a screw right in here.
I do like this uh, sway bar system, and the reason why is it does not have that center ring. So many sway bar kits, even the DR10, the one I installed in the DR10, there's the center ring, uh, and then there's a little set screw, one of the little oppressors, and that's what keeps it from sliding left and right. Uh, this one's very well made, so you do not need one. I mean, you do have a little bit of play, as you can see, but it's not that much. All right, there we go. Uh, now, there's some set screws here. Uh, this is, the, these, you don't actually need. They're, they're to control this motion. Uh, so if you go into with a thinner bar, it'll keep it from, it'll get rid of some of that play. Uh, but let's see, let's go ahead and... All right, so I drove it in carefully and then I backed it out just until this can move freely. So I drove it in, but do it slowly, and then just back it out until this can move up and down freely. The reason why is you don't want to tighten these or else it defeats the purpose of a sway bar. Sway bar is supposed to be a link between the left and the right side. So again, so if you look at this, it moves freely going to go ahead and drive it in. So there it no longer moves freely. You can actually just set it here. So one of the things you can do is just set it like this. So I push it all the way up. Now I will just start backing this out until it drops, which it should have dropped. I don't know why it didn't. All right, let's move it. So I'll do it again. So it's up all the way. So you see how it's up all the way? Start backing, there. That's where you stop. As soon as it drops freely, that's where you stop. Now, uh, all right, that one's in there. And that one's installed. So now I'm working on the rear links. Now these, uh, these you want to be tight you don't want this backing out. Right. So this sway bar is so thick, it does move the other one. But again, like I said, purpose of the sway bar is as this goes up, see, this will create pressure. So this will, as this pushes up, right, opposite equal reaction. So this pushes up, this is gonna go, want to go down, but this is gonna push down. So what it's doing is it's, it's pushing this down. So you turn, does this, sway bar is going to help the chassis roll over the other way and stabilize. Uh, but that's the way it goes. So again, the purpose is not for if this compresses, it pulls this arm up. It's actually the opposite. It's so this helps push that one down. Uh, but that is it for the sway bar. So the sway bar, uh, pretty simple. It's, it's nice that it has the sway bar. I don't remember how much it was on the other vehicle. The DR10 might have been $15, possibly. It's something I would have to look and see. Now, uh, the wheelie bar. I will go ahead and assemble the wheelie bar uh, just to assemble it, but I'm not going to be using it as this will be a 13.5 uh, stock car. 
that's the reason why. But that's uh, bag 13. Oh wait, that was bag 13. Oh, there we go. Right here. Uh, I thought bag 13 was open. So I'll go ahead and place the car over there. Now that I see the parts, I don't really want to do this the wheelie bar, but I'll do it anyway. It's part of the build. Alright, so we have these. Right. Uh, these actually have rubber wheels, so these are rubber. out of the way. All right, here we go. They're very nice. So these are a fiberglass also. This is actually very strong. It's heavier than carbon fiber, but it's stronger than carbon fiber. It's also less expensive to make than carbon fiber. Uh, that's the reason why this material is sometimes chosen. Uh, so we'll go ahead and prepare the thread lock. We have two, four, right. These are different lengths. There we go. We have, all right. So, uh, the wheels, there's going to be a bearing that goes in the wheels. Uh, doesn't seem like it matters where the bearing goes. So I'll go ahead and place it on this side. Oh, there's two bearings. So they have two bearings each. Uh, so there we go, two bearings each. Right in here. Now the longer screws, these are the, I believe these are 20 millimeters. They should be, it says 20 and they are. Uh, these are going to go through the wheel. Now, one of the things that I'm actually surprised, see, this would make sense. Uh, why doesn't it show it? Oh, there we go. It shows it on that picture. All right. You take these little hats, so these little bushings, this will go in. Now, this part will go against the bar. So this will go here against the bar. Now we have these spacers, and nothing is said about these spacers. They happen to be the, the right side. Uh, ah, the spacers go on the chassis. All right, so won't worry about them. So this will go in here. Now, once I have it here, I'll go ahead and apply the thread lock compound. I'll grab one of these and drive this in. Just like that. Now I'll grab the other wheel. Uh, oops, I just made a mistake. So there's a little hat area that goes against the, the wheelie bar. Now, one of the things to note is you wanna make sure that these are oriented the same direction. So it goes this way. Therefore, I want to make sure to mount the wheel on this side. Do not over tighten these and the reason why is uh, you may, one, damage the bearings, two, put too much pressure on the bearings, and second, uh, these need to roll freely. 
So if one of them doesn't roll as free as the other, you're going to have an issue. Uh, but that is it. So we have this here. Now we can move on to the next one. So we have one that goes here, one that goes here. So we'll go ahead and grab these. Uh, let's see, do I use the 10 or the 12? Let's say these are, yeah, these are longer. All right, so we're using these. And I'll put this through. It's too much. All right, and here is the sway bar. So now, in order to attach it to the rear of the car, so I'm just going to go over some of these things. Uh, you will need these little spacers. Uh, so these little spacers will go right in between this and this. And then after that, uh, you have four screws. Grab two of these, put thread lock. Uh, so I'm not going to actually put the spacers because I'm not planning on installing this. Uh, but the sway bar would go right in here, just like that. And then, uh, well, actually I should remove it. So, so these blue spacers will go right in between. So right in between this aluminum block and the bar. Drive one of these in with thread lock. And then, if you notice, there's these holes up here on the shock tower. That's where the top goes. Uh, now, uh, I'll be honest, I do not like these universal ones. And what I mean by universal is there's no notches or anything. The reason why is if you take a hard enough hit, uh, it could twist and then your car's off uh, one way or the other. So you really have to crank it down. Uh, that's one of those things. So keep that in mind. Now I'm not going to use it. And then again, like I've said, uh, you really wanna to try to keep off the sway bar if possible. Uh, and again, it depends on how much power you're running. So these I will consider to be extra parts. And we'll put, I keep calling it a sway bar, it's a wheelie bar. Uh, so the wheelie bar. All right, moving on. So now we can go on to page 14. Uh, page 14 is the last bag we really have to worry about. We do have a spare parts bag and I, uh, the spurts parts, spare parts bag actually has an extra spacer for the transmission, which I'm not going to be using yet. Maybe I'll use it someday, maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it the way it is. Uh, we do have these uh, Velcro style straps, uh, which are great. I actually really like this, these uh, type of straps. Uh, they are great. I prefer those over a little a little nuts that uh, Team Associated tends to use. 
Uh, so we have the straps. Now we also need a servo. Now for this build, uh, I'm just going to reuse the servo. This servo is just, uh, I was just lying about. Uh, so I'll go ahead and use this one. Uh, it's not because it's the best for drag or anything. It's just a servo that I have uh, that I'm willing to use. Uh, you don't need that much torque. Uh, this one, this one actually has a decent amount of torque. I can't remember what the torque rating is. Uh, I mean, this is going into the touring car. That's why I don't, I don't want to use that. Uh, so this is the lucky one that's gonna go in here. One of the things that you need to do also, run power through it. Now, I'm going to go through the installation, but I'm actually going to run power through it uh, really quick. All right, let's see. All right, that's it, uh, zero it out. Go ahead and power this off. All right. Now, uh, there is a metal horn here. Uh, this is heavy, so this, this looks like it might be cast, uh, but you have a steel horn, which is great. Better than a plastic one. Uh, because it's toward the front, it'll also add weight to that part of the vehicle, so that's something uh, to note. Uh, but I will now begin with the servo. Now, servo, uh, the orientation is this way, so this goes to the right of the vehicle, and in this case, the top of the screen. Uh, so, we can go ahead and grab the servo horn. Now this points forward, and there should be a ball stud. Here it is. I'm going to go ahead and open all the bags. Uh, all right, here's the ball stud. So you will need some thread lock compound. Right here. And this will just go here. And now, Let's see. All those screws. Uh, eight millimeter. Which looks like an eight millimeter. That's an eight millimeter. We'll use an eight millimeter. That'll hold the servo horn onto the servo. Now, if you end up needing more weight, you can put uh, weights around here. The other thing too is if you have a large servo, such as a short course servo. Go ahead and use that one. Like I said, I'm using this one because this is what I have available. All right. Now I need four eight millimeters. Let's grab those four right in here. And I need a washer. 
So these will hold the servo on. Uh, actually, it's not these. Oh, here they are. These right here. Now, the L, so this points toward the bottom, so they'll be like this. This is the bottom, this is the top. So this will go right in here. Now, one of the things that I do find annoying about this uh, way of mounting the servo is you have to line them up, and it's sometimes it can be a pain, sometimes you can get lucky. Uh, that's, that's honestly it, that's the only thing that I find annoying. Don't know why I was putting the washer in the dryer, uh, driver, but here we go. All right, second one. So I may have to run some adjustments, but we'll see. As long as this one lines up, everything will work. Chances are it probably will not line up right away, but we will see. Accidentally used one of the large washers there, so I'm going to have to remove them. So there's two washers that are large, and then there's the four small ones. It's the four small ones that you want to use for the servo. There's the L. I'll replace this one. do line up. Well, that's great. Uh, and there's the two countersunk screws. They seem a little short though. Maybe I want longer ones. Uh, eight millimeter. Nope, that is it. Surprise that calls for eight and not ten. I guess you're not really going to be stressing the steering unless you take a really hard, hard impact. Hit a wall. That's it. All right. Servo is there. So now we just need the steering link. And the steering link is a fixed one, so there's no turnbuckles, it's just this. Uh, and one of the things to note is, notice that is a small diameter, that is a large diameter. The small diameter goes up, the ball goes through the large diameter. So when setting this, this will go this way. So notice small toward the rear, small up. 
Uh, so make sure you orient this correctly. And another recommendation, install it on the steering before the servo. Should have done that. The only reason why I'm using this driver is to uh, put pressure down below here and relieve some stress from the plastic arm. That's the only reason why. It probably won't break, but I don't want to risk it. I don't want to accidentally push and then break the whole thing. Uh, that's the reason why. It's, it's just tedious. Tedious to replace something that could have been prevented. Uh, all right. The servo is in place, so at this time uh, you can go ahead and install the motor now the motor i'm going to be using is this one here and it's set at 33 degrees for now uh, the rest of the timing i can just go in the esc so here if you use one of these x factors uh, they don't really line up so here it says 30 it's 33 i guess close enough there's some other motors that are farther off especially lower in the range uh, so this is the motor that's going to go in there and uh, go ahead and do this. Now, uh, as far as a pinion, uh, I did not think of what pinion to use, uh, but I could start small and then work my way up, which is always a good idea. Uh, so that's what I'm going to end up doing. All right, so I need more pinions, uh, but I have a 35 and a 25 massive difference. Not sure if the 35 will fit, but I can try this and then see. Although ideally, well, not ideally, I actually want a 30 and then start with a 30, but maybe the 25 will be the best way to go. And then I can go up, down, depending on uh, temperatures and all that good stuff. Uh, but let's see. So motor will go through here. And uh, now the screws that it calls for are the eight millimeters with the large washers. So these large washers are for the motor. We'll go ahead and grab this one. Definitely put some thread lock on this. And again, just use the blue stuff. Do not use the red. Uh, let's see. All right, so it'll be at an angle. Should I solder now? No, I can solder later, good. screws in. Now, one of the things that I do like about this motor mount is it just goes back and forth. Uh, it doesn't go up and down, it just goes back and forth. Which, if you've watched my video comparing the, I think it was the Proline stock slash transmission, the 272, and then the 272R, that's one of the things that I, I talk about, uh, the differences in how they mount. Now that I'm looking at this, the 35 is way too big, uh, so that makes it easy. Don't remember if I have a 30, I'll have to check. Uh, all right, so I need to turn the motor. All right, perfect. 
All right, now the first thing you want to do is uh, you want to align the pinion and you really want to make sure that the teeth have full contact. Uh, so having a pinion, a metal pinion with longer teeth is a very good idea because then uh, that'll guarantee that you will grab the full length of the plastic teeth. If you buy some really cheap pinions and they're thinner, you're gonna end up destroying this. And not, uh, just because they're thinner doesn't mean they're cheap. The thing is that this is 48 pitch and they do make 48 pitch for Turing cars, 110 scale Turing cars, and those are thinner, but the spurs are also thinner. Keep in mind those are lighter vehicles so you can get away with that. This is a much heavier vehicle. You cannot get away with that. You are going to destroy this. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, uh, to set the mesh, uh, you can just grab a, just a piece of paper, set it there, or you can eye it and then do it by feel. Uh, so that's way too tight. There should be a slight clicking noise. A little too much, a little too much. Not enough. Definitely paper would be, it's turning out to be, would have been the fastest way. Uh, that's all right. All right, I think I got it. Perfect. So if, if this is not meshed correctly, uh, two things can happen. If it's too loose, this will just destroy the tips of the gears. Uh, if it's too tight, uh, there'll be too much friction, too much heat, it'll melt the teeth off the gears. So those are two things to keep in mind. So however you do it, paper or not, you want to feel just a small, very small amount of play. And sometimes you can hear a little click, uh, but small amount. All right, so that is all for that. And I have plenty of space here to solder after. Uh, so that's something that you want to mind. Uh, now that I take a look at this, the ESC is going to be right here. So I actually don't need uh, such long wires. But let's see. All right. Uh, the next step. So I could put the dust cover on. Uh, this will just go around. And... We'll go here and I will use two small screws. So it should be the two button screws. You should, you should only have two button screws left. Those are the ones you're going to be using. There's the driver. Uh, you can't put some thread lock on here since it is going into aluminum. that uh, all right now let's see uh, velcro let's go ahead and grab this and we'll run it through All 
All right, this is something else I should have done beforehand. It would have been a lot easier. That's all right. Now, quick note of the battery. So when you put the battery in here, whatever battery you use, uh, this will go over it. So don't put this under and then this goes here. And then uh, I put this backwards. Great, but anyway, the point is I'll flip it in a while, in a bit. And then you just sort of do that. Uh, so I need to change the way this Velcro is. So make sure the felt is facing down. This would go here, so it'll look like this. Right, just make sure you put this over here, a little farther down. This would actually be a perfect spot. There. You can always trim the excess off, it's up to you. All right. And now I can put the other one. So the felt goes under. So you can't really tell where it's telling me to mount the receiver because the ESC appears to go on top. The receiver almost seems like it wants me to hide it underneath. Uh, but if I take the ESC, I mean this ESC is going to take up the entire area. Uh, so this would go here. Uh, battery wires, oh, this is going to be some of a pain. Well, I guess I could mount it just in front of the screws. So those screws are somewhat in the way. Uh, these are the, the wires that came with it. I did not modify them, as in I didn't cut them. Uh, so I'd have to mount the battery. Well, I'd have to mount this this way or get longer wires. Uh, so I do find this to be a little annoying. Uh, all right, well, let's see. Yeah, I cannot really see where, here, let me just place the battery and then I'll see how much space I have. Uh, so I slide this in. I do have shorty packs as well, so I could potentially double stick the receiver down here. Uh, right. So if I place the receiver right in here, it would fit, uh, but then I wouldn't have the option of moving this. Now I think it would fit based on the dimensions. Uh, but then that would be a problem. So what I can do is I can double stick the receiver somewhere over here. So I do have this little plate and stick the plate there, put the receiver somewhere else. Uh, as of now, the ESC, sorry, the ESC will go here. Oh, maybe I can stand this up somehow. Uh, it's these two mounting, to, to be honest, I would have used this instead of that uh, had I seen this earlier, but I did not. And I'm trying to see if I can screw it somewhere. If I could screw this here, yes, there's gonna be a little more weight off to one side, but that could potentially work. Maybe down here. 
Uh, ha, ha, ha. I could tape it standing upright. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just do that. I'll do that and I'll call it good. Uh, so let me get the alcohol. And I'll get a new piece of towel. Because the other one has a bunch of oils on it. I'll start cleaning. this, I'm going to mount this way, so I'll clean this side. There we go. And perfect. Uh, so now I just need a piece of tape for here, and I'll be using this. This will be good size. Actually, that's too small. Should have gone the entire length. I always save this for later. Here we go. Press this on. Actually, I can, I can cut the strip from here, the one that I need for the receiver. All right. Here we go. That's definitely on. Uh, all right, let's see. All right, these these would work. Just need a foam block in the rear. I do have a foam block and I'm about somewhere. I mean, I have, oh, speaking about foam blocks, there they are. just have to trim this block. I'll worry about it later. I don't know if I want to run the battery back or run it in front. Uh, good thing is I have a foam block. All right. Uh, good. So this will work. This goes to the motor. I can leave this length here for now. That way I don't have to cut the wires. I don't want to cut the wires. Uh, I do have to attach this to the receiver. So Let's go ahead and take care of that. Need to take care of the steering as well. Uh, so all I'm doing is I'm just coiling the 
receiver lead, sorry, the receiver lead, uh, the servo lead, so that I can connect it to the receiver. Now, uh, I'm going left, but just be consistent, either go left or go right. And the, the reason why is if you have to redo this, recoil them, uh, make sure you do it the same direction as before. this way and this goes number two there we go perfect could call this one a little more uh, it would be better if you call it to the right I called it to the left this one actually works out great to the left this one would have been better to the right uh, so just keep that in mind. I could go around the other way. I'm thinking I'll go around the other way. Uh, so I'll do that. And now the only thing I have to do is uh, mount this switch somewhere. I'll probably mount it over here. Just toward the back. Just down here. Is too long, but that's all right. Switch is mounted, battery's there. Uh, go, go ahead and remove the battery. Uh, and that is it. So this is the complete roller. Uh, all I need now is to fully charge the battery. Uh, this is already programmed to the receiver. I need to solder the motor on. And then once I solder the motor on, just install wheels and tires uh, and a body. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you in the next one.